Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and as always I'm here with Jess Perkins. Hello Dave. And this week we are very lucky to be joined by a very special guest. Joining us this week it's Seren Jayamana. Hello, Hello Seren. Wow, what a pleasure. Long time listener, first time studio wow. guest. Yeah, wow. That's a big get for you. Thank you. <laughs> You've been knocking at that door for months. Yeah, scratching at it. We finally opened it. Let me in. It's beautiful to come in. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt went out to the bathroom and just didn't come back, so yeah. we're like, all right, Seren, you're in. Seren, yeah. you're in. He, he was excited to invite me on, and I think it's because he knew he wasn't going to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for the people at home, that's what happened. Matt invited you on. Do you want to be on the show? Fantastic. Mm. And then what? a few of days later, I messaged you saying, sorry, I won't be there. <laughs> I'm going on holiday. Yeah. I won't be there. Love your way. Um, but that's okay. You get to hang out with us and we're fun too. I can, Yeah. <laughs> I've hung out with you before. Yeah. yeah. We're and fun. we're fun, aren't we? Say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually we're, we're stoked to have you on the show because you've been pretty busy lately. You mm. are This month in July, you've got... A stand-up show coming up. Fantastic. I saw it at the Adelaide Fringe Festival. Before we get to that, you've also got a TV show coming out. Yeah. It's a TV show on the real TV. Yeah. It's, that's a big deal. It's not YouTube. No. It's on TV. It's on the actual TV. And, and as you pointed out to me, Dave, multiple times. Multiple yes. times. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. There's people, different markets have been captured by this show. I think you said some days it's on twice. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah, yeah. on my wall. Yeah, that's expectations. Yeah, I love that. Because I was on uh, yourtv.com.au and uh, the Sydney TV guide comes up. Your show is called Good Tucker. Uh, I thought you were, because, my, yeah, my show is going to be on TV. It's called Good Tucker. And then I thought you were saying, I, I was on your TV. Yeah. Like, we, we've all been on TV. <laughs> I was like, dot com dot e. yeah. uh, I was on your TV. <laughs> uh, yes, it's called Good Tucker. It's with Matt Stewart. Mm. Um, and we, we travel around to different parts of Victoria. We taste food and uh, we meet the local. It's about the migrants that run restaurants in, in regional Victoria. Which is so cool. Great idea. And you get to go around and, like, eat all this delicious food. We had a lot of fun and Matt played – We at the the very start of the series, we decided Matt was going to be uh, the, cur- the curmudgeon character. Oh, great. <laughs> and he really – he. He relished it. Yeah. He thrived. Yeah. It's just a nice change for him. Yes, so. exactly. So it's an Oscar-worthy performance. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the role. I think he's been method all this time, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. <laughs> a lifelong audition <laughs> for the show. What's, what's the best thing you ate? Oh, great question. Uh, we had a lot of good food. It was all pretty good. I reckon um, the, my favourite meal was we went to Dalesford, Spa country. Beautiful. That and is a we, lovely part of Australia. There's a guy there who uh, is Maltese background, but he spent some time in Japan. He married a Japanese lady and he came back and brought like the Japanese style of, of like local source of ingredients. And um, it's, I think it's called Kaiseki where it's like little little dishes and the whole meal takes you on a journey. It was Ooh, so crazy. It that's was nice. And he took us foraging during the day. <laughs> we, yeah, what we, were you foraging for? Uh, food. <laughs> I mean, I, I say for dumpster diving. We went, no, no, we went dumpster, no, we went, we went, picked rose hips from the side of the Ooh. road, and, and we went looking for pine mushrooms. It was a good time. That's so nice. What an experience! Beautiful. And Delicious. you get to watch it, yeah, three times a day on your TV, <laughs> yeah, on your TV, <laughs> or break into Seren's house and watch it on his TV. <laughs> Whatever. Borrow a friend's TV. <laughs> Just make it happen. So the show's on SBS Food. Yes. That seems appropriate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's where it belongs, I think. And it's yeah. called Good Tucker. Fantastic. Yeah. Can't wait to check it out. I've heard a lot about it from Matt. Mm-hmm. Now we get to finally see see his curmudgeoning. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to support him in, talking his, it up. in his dreams. And at the end of July, you've got uh, an encore, I was going to say screening, but encore performance. <laughs> yes. It's an encore screening on your TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. My comedy festival show, The Bag of Vegeta, I'll be doing it again at the Comedy Republic for their replay festival. Mm. This will be the last hurrah. I think you saw a very early and bad version of it in Adelaide. You were, yeah. And, no, uh, I, Matt and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I think we w- went on the, the classic Saturday night when you have people who've just wandered into a show, maybe not sure what they're going to see, mm. and you've got to work really hard to get them on board. Yes. But Matt and I were in the front row. T- tiny little room yeah, at yeah. the back of the Rhino Room in Adelaide. I think there was probably six seats and you were at yeah, to Matt and the I whole thing it. was the front row. Yeah. You had no choice <laughs> but to be in the front row. No, we loved it. You're a fantastic stand-up comedian. And what what day is it on? 22nd of July. 22nd of July. That's a Saturday. 6.30 p.m. It's, uh, it's still daylight at that time, thankfully, in the heart of winter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to be warm to your cockles, come see some comedy. Come on down at Comedy Republic. <laughs> Melbourne's premier comedy venue. Best, place, best place in the world. It is. 
the best place. Love it. In the world. In the world. Now, you've come on to tell us a tale, Saren. Mm. Yeah, that's We've got, We're not sure what you're going to talk about, but we should say for people at home who haven't listened before, what we usually do here is we get a topic often suggested by listeners, but sometimes just something that we've come across, something we fancy you're talking about. Go away, do a bit of research and bring it back to the group. Now, as we said, it's your turn to- Your turn. Your turn. You've been waiting a long time. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's you your first volunteered. episode and it's your yeah, turn. That's right. <laughs> you volunteered to give Jess and I a week off and we appreciate it so much. And you're going to tell us about a topic. Uh, usually we get onto a topic with a question. Do you have a question for I do. us? I do. Okay. My question is about a common phrase. Oh, okay. Okay. So if I'm going to, I'm going to give you the definition and I want you <laughs> oh, this is good. to tell me. The phrase. The phrase. Ooh, okay. 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 So it's a phrase used to refer to an attitude when someone adopts a negative attitude to something just because they cannot have it themselves. So when someone pretends to mm. have disdain for something. Oh, a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Final answer. Yeah. Actually, I didn't realise this. It, yeah. <laughs> Quite a broad definition. <laughs> Covers a lot no. of different phrases. But no. yeah, so not, oh. not the person themselves, but how would you describe the person? Oh. Or, or, or like, you know, no, sorry, that's a piece of shit. It's, yeah, that's yeah. how you would describe them. <laughs> so it's like, like a sore loser? What's the attitude? <laughs> um, what's the attitude? So it's something attitude. Yeah, so it's the attitude someone will have, or it's like. Oh, uh, let me it's try exciting. use it in a in a sentence for you. Oh, I had I had found a sentence, and I threw it away because I no, thought this, you would, this is good. You thought we'd get it straight away. Yeah, you have, you've forgotten that we're in. <laughs> oh, we're so sorry. Um, People are yelling at their iPods. Hang on, at home. hang on, hang on. Okay. I've got it. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, how do you use this in a sentence? Is what I've googled. Okay. But then I realise I can't. Uh, okay. Do you have to say blank or something? I wish I was more prepared for this first question bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so this is an example. She said that she and her husband didn't want to join the club anyway, but it was clearly a case of... Oh, um... <laughs> a case of... What is it? <laughs> Would you like me to... Oh, okay, how can I give you a A case clue? of you. So, sorry, that was that Brendan Fraser movie we've just watched yeah. on, uh, oh, okay. on uh, our Phrasing the Bar Patreon podcast. It wasn't good. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about long. this? It's it usually the second word of this two-word phrase mm. <laughs> is a fruit. And the first word... <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I love this. ...is a flavour profile that you would not typically expect with that fruit. Uh, sour? Yes. Bananas. Okay. Sour I mean, just really. I, yes. Sour grapes. Yes. <laughs> Great one. <laughs> but God, we needed so much work from you to get I, there. I th- you, you got that at one. Sour Jess. grapes. Yeah, I thought with the. I, th- I was impressed with sour, and then I thought they've got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I thought so too. So you, would, you would be pretty disappointed if you got a sour, sour banana. banana. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. And you were saying the wrong f- flavor profile. I've never heard of a sour banana. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get that, more wrong. True, that is. Yeah. Come on. I feel like that, that was a bum steer from you. Okay? Yeah. The whole thing might have been a bum steer. <laughs> no. It's just, and then so, I was just trying to get it back on the yeah, fucking road. No, I like that. So sour grapes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I still don't know what we're talking about. I love it. <laughs> well, sour grapes is the name of a documentary which tells the story that I'm about to oh, tell you. Oh, cool. cool. Does, does that ring a bell for you? Because it's not ringing bells for me. No. Love it. And uh, what, what are grapes usually used in? This is a follow-up question. Wine. Wine, okay. yes. yes. And so oh. this story is about the great wine fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Are you guys fans of wine? We're you love a tip fans wine? of fraud, to be honest. Okay, great. Absolutely. We We're love cheering, fraud cheering for the fraud. Yeah. Well, if you want some inspiration. Wine, I've started getting slightly more into it. I had a few months where I was trying a gluten-free diet. So, you know, beer, which is just my go-to alcoholic drink, was off the table. So, I was trying different types of wine. I think yes. I'm more of a, I've discovered more of a red than a white kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. But um, I don't have a sophisticated palate, I must say. Jess? Uh, I don't mind it. I don't mind wine, but it does tend to trigger migraines for me. So Whoa. I don't have it much. Right. Really? <laughs> so okay. wine minds you. You know what I mind. I think it sounds like someone's <laughs> got a case of sour grapes. Um, <laughs> I don't even want it anyway. <laughs> I don't even a- want to drink a wine. <laughs> Are you a wine drinker, Seren? Uh No, I should be. I've been in a relationship with a uh, someone who knows wines intimately. Oh, for wow. ten years, she works. She's worked in the wine industry. She knows it. She has taste, and so right. I've kind of piggybacked. Well, off we that know she like, has taste. She's chosen you. Thank exactly. You, Jess. Hey, hey. Yeah. Where's that kind of flattery, Dave? 
You're a lovely man. Thank you. <laughs> Mine was better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I would say the sincerity and the not mm. responding to begging. That's <laughs> what, what made yours well. Yeah. This, you, are, you are not a sour banana. Thank you. Is that good? Because that would be wrong. <laughs> that, That's that the wrong kind wrong. of flavour profile. You don't want that. Um, no, yeah, so, yeah, so, you should know wine better. Yeah, I feel like well, if you're surrounded by someone who is only introducing you to good stuff and you're still like, eh, maybe it's not, you're not yeah. into it. But I, I think I've just been spoiled and I never have to, if we're out at a restaurant, I never have to look at the wine list because she's picking it. And I so would, you don't necessarily know that much about I don't know wine. anything yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll just parrot what she says. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a, a nice tannin. Yeah, or oh, oak. Oak, yeah. yeah mm. stuff like that. So I still say all the pleb stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not to call you a pleb sorry <laughs> that's not what i meant uh, okay great wine fraud yes but if you're fans of fraud you might enjoy this story yes uh our central character his name is rudy kernewan ring any bells no. rudy kernewan he doesn't ring bells he uh actually <laughs> he's a very rich person he gets people to ring bells for him oh. he was born <laughs> in jakarta but he was born jeng wang huang okay which uh, is a Chinese name, but then his father gave him an Indonesian last name, which uh, he said was to protect his identity. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, fraud <laughs> like from an early feels age. Like fraud going all the way back. It to feels birth. like he's born into a family which should just have already committed to fraud. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. Churn out a, f- a few different people, different kids, and uh, give them different names. Yeah, you give your baby an often. alias. Yeah, I think that's smart. Rather than burdening them with having to come up with their own alias at some point, yeah, do it yeah, for exactly. them. Exactly. Give them Kernia one. Yeah. That's a already sounds like fraud to me. Sort of like when parents give kids names that can kind of be shortened or, you know, they can use. He can be Barnaby, but he could also just be Barry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. Like that. I think it's just that. You're just giving him an alias. It could be Barry. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I thought it was Barnaby and then I was like, Barney. Oh, Bar- Barney is where I should have gone. Yeah, God yeah, yeah, yeah. damn it. Barry is a real alias. If you know Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so close to Barney. Yeah. Nobody would suspect. That's right. Yeah. Ooh. Sometimes it's better to stay close to the. And that was my thought process in this whole thing too. It wasn't that I'm an idiot. Great. Have, you, have you guys ever had an alias? When I first started doing stand up, yeah, someone told me that uh, it would be too difficult with the name Saranjayamana. So I signed up to gigs as uh, Gary Glitter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear what you called yourself. What, what are you? Barry. Uh, <laughs> Barry. Um, no, I, I call my. I just split my surname up. So I was J E like the like initial yep. man. J E man. Please welcome to the stage, J E Man. Yeah. Because I was upset. I thought, you know, Michael J. Fox. <laughs> you got to have the, the initial, you know. J E Man. David Hyde Pierce. No, that's he has the whole name. There's got to be some other initials. William H. Macy. <laughs> William H. Macy. <laughs> Philip K. No, Roth. Yes, yep. Or K. Dick. I was going to say Philip yeah, Seymour. Oh. Roth, but that's not, that's <laughs> yeah, that's what I did with David <laughs> Hyde Pierce. K. Dick, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, okay. So I wanted to have the J E man. How, how long were you J E man before you were like, this is dumb? I'm just going to make people learn oh, how to say my name. <laughs> I'd say about six gigs, probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's good. And then the same person who told me that it would be terrible to have <laughs> my name was like, that's even worse. So, <laughs> yeah, just like, have that's your even name. Harder. <laughs> just have your name. <laughs> and I have to say, oh, 10 years later, bro, I wish I'd stuck with it. You yeah, wish that we were yeah. introducing you today as J.E. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we, having known you for years, were like, did you know his name's actually Soren? Soren. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we think it sounds so weird to well, us. I can't, but- I can't get my head around that. <laughs> not, not, I, I don't wish I'd stayed with it for comedy reasons, by the way, just for fraud. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> with my family, big into fraud. <laughs> Prime reasons. <laughs> but my dad never gave me an alias. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Kearney one, he's... Uh, he actually born in Indonesia, but in his early teens, or sort of late teens, he went to the US of A, mm-hmm. and that is where this story really kicks off. Um, he had his first sip of wine in 2000. Oh, wow. It Bring, wasn't, at the Millennium Party? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing it in. Well. Well, the world really changed. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you have to celebrate when actually the Millennium Bug proved <laughs> yeah. to be, you know, just a, a, a myth. Yeah, not that big a deal. Yeah, as it turns out, computers figured themselves out. 
They went, oh, it's just. Yeah, oh, it's fine. That's fine. Some bugs, you don't want to be around. <laughs> no. Mm. But the Millennium Bug runs from you. Uh, <laughs> so his first sip of wine in 2000, it was a 1995 Opus 1 which is a Cabernet from Napa Valley. Mm. Uh, and this gave him his, his sort of, from here, just fell in love with wine. And uh, his main interest was Californian wines, in particular Pinot Noir. Is okay. that one of the reds that gives you a migraine? Yep, probably, yep. Yeah, you really, yeah, don't know much about wine. <laughs> <But> <laughs> before long, though, he his love for Californian wines takes a turn and he becomes interested in the much more glamorous Burgundy. Mm. From France, oh, so Burgundy oh. is like real fancy wines. Burgundy is like one of the the, fa- the fanciest. Mm-hmm. You've really picked up the lingo. From yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I should know more about Burgundy. Most elegant palate, mm. but it's like a, it's the it's the area where the wine the vines go down into the rock. Oh, and uh, and you can see like the if you go down into the cellars because in France they have these real. Like old ancient cellars, mm. they say heavens above you. <laughs> no, <laughs> heavens down below in the cellar. <laughs> That's a line one of the French people say. But, <laughs> but if you go down into there, you can see the vines. They're like leaching out the water from the rock, and then those minerals go into the wine. Wow! So it's really it's that's why wine is so regional. That's really cool. So he's developed a taste for Burgundy, and this becomes the basis for the great wine fraud. Whoa. Just a little bit of information about Rudy's family before I get into more of Rudy's story. His uncle is a man named Eddie Tansil, and Eddie Tansil is an Indonesian businessman of Chinese descent, and he was caught embezzling $565 million US dollars. <laughs> That's so much money, <laughs> Eddie. so much. Uh, and so he basically, they owned banks, these two these two uncles of um, Rudy Kearney one, they own these banks and they just took money straight out of the bank. Wow. In 1994, Tansel was sentenced to 17 years in prison and uh, he had to pay 1.3, oh, sorry, he had to pay 30 million rupiah because he stole 1.3 trillion oh. rupiah. <laughs> That I, feels like a good deal. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be nothing to him. Also, you know what makes the deal even better? He he was sentenced to 17 years in prison, but two years into the sentence, he broke out of jail. Because <laughs> he had 1.3 trillion rupiah. He just paid the prison staff. <laughs> he just bought the jail. He bought, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And he ran off to China and then he ran like a Bex beer distribution company in China. And wow. just lived yeah. happily. Indonesia were never able to get him back. <laughs> oh my God. So this is setting some context for Rudy's so, family. But that just kind of makes sense as to why his dad gives him an alias. Yes. Yeah, I don't want right to be associated away. with... Yeah, your uncles. Your uncles. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, I don't want... You, yeah. <laughs> they don't want to be associated with you. I it's don't know. It's so much money to steal. It's so funny. I tried to work out what 1.3 trillion rupiah in 1994 would be in Australian dollars. And it's too many zeros. It's too many for yeah. a calculator. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I don't know what a trillion is. It's too many. Yeah, it's too many. Hang on. Aren't you a, a chartered accountant? Yeah, that's how complicated this is. <laughs> Even yeah, with also, my years of experience. <laughs> do you think that many, I mean, do you think in many years of experience, Seren's come across that many people with a trillion dollars? <sighs> no. No. <laughs> really, yeah, I'll I'll you with, there with you anticipation. Go. There Damn. you go. I barely even, know anyone with like a thousand dollars. I have been in comedy for a while. But, uh, <laughs> and then Rudy's other uncle is a guy called Hendra Rahaja, and he also owned some banks and and ran off with money from the banks. <laughs> and he fled Indonesia uh, in the late nineties, and that was when all their banks collapsed. They had this big economic crisis in Indonesia, and he actually tried to come to Australia, and he was arrested at Sydney's Kingford Smith Airport. Really? They arrested him? Yeah, so the Indonesian government sent out a diplomatic warrant. Yeah, wow. And uh, and they flagged his passport. So when he arrived in Australia, they arrested him and then he ended up dying in custody in Australia. Oh, shit. But this is Rudy's uncles. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So he makes his way to the US. He's like a pretty handsome little guy. He's, uh, he's got sort of long back, slicked back hair, baby face mm-hmm. kind of guy. And uh, before long, he starts to make a name for himself on the Los Angeles scene, the, the wine scene. The wine scene. Yeah, not the comedy oh, right. scene. He's, <laughs> he's not hitting the open he's, mics. He's hitting auditions. He's going to be a star. <laughs> yeah, he's not in the comedy cellar. He's in the other kind of cellar. <laughs> <laughs> But he, so he's got swept back hair and he has a hearty laugh. He's very charismatic. He wears custom-made Hermes suits and he owned a Ferrari and a Bentley. <laughs> at the same time. At the same time. Drove them both at the same that's time. impressive. <laughs> Just sort of doing the splits between them. Yeah, that's really typical. Classic. His uncle ran off with $1.3 trillion. <laughs> I'm surprised that he only has two <laughs> I'm, cars. But I'm always interested in people who have multiple cars to their, to themselves. You know what I mean? Like there's two cars in my household. But there's two of us. You know, we have one each. Yeah, you have the Ferrari, he has the Bentley. That's right. It makes sense. Uh, the podcast is doing very well. <laughs> um, no, but like, yeah, if you've got multiple cars just for yourself, I would feel bad for, you know, like that they're not all getting <laughs> driven every day. Yeah. I guess a Ferrari and a Bentley, they go different speeds, don't they? Yeah, true. So for different things. Yeah. 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 But they're still, I find for that you'd be stressed driving either of those because they're so expensive. Exactly right. You yeah. also would want, I reckon... A day-to-day car, like a Volkswagen or something, <laughs> that you can yeah, just park, buy a Golf. You could, yes, you, that you could park <laughs> at Coles and leave and not worry about it. But your your Ferrari, your Bentley. But maybe is- maybe he felt modest. It's like three cars. That would be too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just go I, two. I can't you have know. the everyday Golf. To- <laughs> I'm not like my uncle. I'm not that flashy. This is a, that's like the exact conversation I had with a mechanic one time as I was getting my. 2003 Toyota Echo serviced, um, and he had bought a Porsche and taken it back like two weeks later because he was like, you sit in the same traffic and you're so scared to park it anywhere because of other go. people. So he's like, just stick with your little Echo. And I'm like, I might upgrade it at some point. <laughs> I reckon I've had There it. is something between an Echo yeah. and a Porsche. <laughs> There's, some, there's quite a bit of... The remote central locking does not work. Uh, well, it does on the passenger door, but not on mine. And he's like, but you're in the same traffic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't know how good you've got it. you got it so good. I'm like, I can't... It's a two-door car. Nobody can get the back. I might get a new one. No, don't. don't that's it. my problem, actually, is I'm stuck in traffic quite a lot with doors that don't fucking lock. <laughs> <laughs> or open when I need them to. But you only have to worry about two doors. Actually, that's the same with most Porsches. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so he has two cars, mm-hmm. and they're, they're pretty good cars. Uh, and But despite having all of this stuff, he actually becomes quite popular amongst the Los Angeles scene because he's a very generous person. People, they're going out to dinner, they're drinking these fancy wines, and he's always throwing his Amex card down. Getting um, those points. And those friends in the wine community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's all about hey, points. Hey, get a Ferrari. <laughs> Yeah. Just using your own uncle's stolen. <laughs> okay. yeah. He's using his points. Yeah. Hey, you guys, you're going to pay me back for that, right? But I'll keep the points. Is that what we're doing here? I'll keep the points. I'm trying to get these Taylor Swift pre sale tickets, okay? All right? I need this card. Yeah, pre sale in 1994 <laughs> for the 2023. Yeah, that's right. She was six tour. years old. You got to get in. Do you actually know that she was... Yeah, didn't she have a, 19, a 1989 as one of her albums? Is that right? she was five. Oh. And, and I think about it and I go, God, she's only a year older than I am and she's yep. achieved a lot more. Oh, I don't know. We've sold out the MCG a few times. Exactly. Well, she's done it. What well, She's doing three now. We've only done it twice. Yeah. But don't worry, next year... We're coming for you, T-Swift. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do four back-to-back at the MCG. <laughs> Live podcasts. <laughs> Imagine we book four before Queen's we birthday book... birthday long weekend. Before we book one. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I reckon that they'll get rid of the, the Anzac Day footy clash, mm-hmm. be replaced with a live podcast. I think people would love that. Because you have your 300th, the live, th- has it happened? We or did 400th, sorry. But we could do our 500th and 501st, 500 and 500 503rd yeah. live at the MCG. Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it'll be great. Do you want to come? I'll get you a comp. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll sell out, so I'll comp you. I would say you've got to do it as like your 498th, 499th, 500th. Oh, okay. Oh, that's better. Because you want the big one to be like, you know, because <laughs> you're, like, yeah. yeah. you're not going to even sell. Who's coming one to the 400 and 500? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He has so little faith in us. So okay. so offensive. I really thought we could sell, yeah, 100 Everybody, underest- yeah, everybody really underestimates our podcast. <laughs> really th- Maybe if you did it in one of the boxes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or one of the like the MCG's members' toilets or something. Yeah. <laughs> we could fit three people. And in we could us. say oh, pretty we nice. performed at the MCG. Yeah, we sold out the toilet at the MCG. <laughs> yeah, if you you could get a hundred thousand if you 
also time it. Well, it's actually 2 p.m. on uh, the 25th of yeah. uh, <laughs> April <laughs> yeah. 2024. Perfect. See? You're going to feel so stupid Are when they- we sell out the FCG. <laughs> yeah, they've tipped that Kylie Minogue might be the halftime uh, act at the grand final this year, but absolutely not. We're swooping in. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Everyone pop down, please. Shut up. Come on. <laughs> Shut, Shut up. up. Shut up. Jess has got a question. Get us on the topic. <laughs> So the halftime break's only meant to be 20 minutes, but it's gone for three and a half hours. <laughs> That's right. It's Matt doing the report. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we've detoured again. He's got two Beautiful. cars. He's thrown down the Amex for stuff. Yeah, good. Yeah, he's he's and- generous and he's baby face. He's, he sounds like a cool, handsome guy. Yeah. He sounds like a cool guy. But his friends, they have no idea where he comes from because there weren't that many Indonesians of Chinese descent kicking around Los Angeles in the early 90s. But despite his mysterious origins, his friends just, they don't, they turn a blind eye. <laughs> they're, like, they're pretty happy getting free I've stuff. never even heard of Indonesia. It's pretty funny to be like, his friends don't know where he's come from because they've never asked. <laughs> yeah, um, no. They're not real friends. <laughs> they're more concerned with these, you know, pockets of seemingly infinite depth. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Hermes suits have changed, I think, <laughs> in the 90s. You could, Big you, pockets. They they didn't even want his money. They just had a lot of stuff that they were carrying around. <laughs> carrying my keys. keys. <laughs> That's always keys. Yeah, everyone's got multiple cars in this scene. That's right. He's only got two. <laughs> uh, so there are rumours that he was living off handouts from his family, the wealthy family, but no one really asked any questions. As long as the dinners were, were free-flowing, the booze, they were happy. So uh, he, he falls in with some of South California's wealthiest, do you know this word? Uenophiles. Oh. I think that's how you pronounce it. O E N O F A P H I L E S. Whoa, no idea. Maybe what a it's great ur- word. Urnophiles. Okay. I love it. But it's like wine. I think they're the the the, the philia of wine. Your partner's well, not like, using this word at home? No. Different philias. <laughs> at home. <laughs> Necro and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like um, a like 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 cinephiles. Yes, yeah, yeah, like yeah, people yeah, who love yeah, wine. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also love film. <laughs> <laughs> Secondary passion. Um, a particular genre of film. <laughs> uh, so he he became a regular in three of these Los Angeles tasting groups, and these are the names. Of the tasting oh, groups. Love this. Wine okay. tasting groups. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Because now you've got WhatsApp groups and you've got Facebook groups. And yeah. We, you give them f- cool nicknames. Of course. But this has always existed. Yep. Throughout history. I was just talking earlier about uh, a group chat I have with Michelle Brazier and her partner and my partner, because we're all friends, and our group chat is called Goose Piss Party. Goose Piss Party. Goose is my dog. <laughs> yes. And he pisses at their house a lot. Okay. He arrives. He's like, hello, immediately pisses inside. On a rug, every he just pisses, and it's a cause for celebration. Exactly right. Let's so now, have a party. Goose Piss Party, Goose piss party. <laughs> is the name of our group chat. <laughs> so let's hear, let's see, let's see if the, any of these wine groups. Does he hold on to it for? Does he? Can he tell that you're heading over to the Braziers? I know, he must. My because my dog's very territorial, right? And he, when he knows that we're about to go for a walk, he just takes a big gulp of. <laughs> That's the only time he goes to his water bottle. I'm loading up here. Yeah. Yes. And then he's just walking around, lifting his leg all over the place. Yep. He's like, I'm really making, yeah. I'm having a good day. Yeah, yeah. I'm pissing on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going? Hang on a sec. <laughs> I'm going to have a big drink. <laughs> My dog waits till midnight to have a drink that goes forever. And I'm in bed like, shut up. Oh, my God. For like 15 minutes. Do you ever, uh, sometimes I'll take Larry out and he, immediate, as soon as he gets out the door, he'll lift his leg and it'll, and it'll be gone for like three minutes and I'll, I'll feel so guilty because <laughs> he's been waiting at the door and I'm like, ah, he just went for a piss an hour ago. And it's like, <laughs> he's an like, I've got to go. <laughs> anyway, wine testing groups. Locks eyes with you. <laughs> <laughs> you did this to me. <laughs> okay. So one of the wine groups was called the Goose Piss Party. <laughs> 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 uh, no, it's called the first one was called the Berg Whores. <laughs> Berg Whores, <laughs> yeah, because they're Burgundy. I guess they're whores for Burgundy. They're whores for Burgundy. But it, and it's supposed to sound a bit like burgers. So what the, the Berg joke is? I, I assume that was the play on words there. <laughs> but the, the Berg- one large Berg Whore, please. <laughs> Extra cheese. I'll have a cheese Berg Whore. <laughs> Extra cheese. <laughs> It just sounds like one of those kids with like a bit of a speech impediment. I love a burg whore. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll I want a cheeseburger. <laughs> Give me a boiger. 
A boy core. A boy core. <laughs> a boy core. I can't see any wired right. <laughs> Extra cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Burgle, that's pretty. That's a good start. That's, Burgle, that's good funny. Start. That's what it's going to be. Uh, the second one: deaf, dumb, and blind. Okay. I guess that's a uh, yeah. So um, nineteen ninety four is different time. Yeah, yeah right. And yeah. they're yeah. ableist. Their em- emphasis is on like getting blind drunk. Is that the kind of the? I guess. I think maybe, so. Yeah. And, then, and then obviously, you know, they were also unable to hear. And um, <laughs> were they really, they're really drinking? Okay, <laughs> couldn't speak. Uh, the third title: the Royal Order of the Purple Palette. Okay. <laughs> oh, I hate that. <laughs> I'd rather be a berg whore. Yeah, that's a. That's different classes there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. Different. The berg whores are the common folk. Yeah. They're, they're having all the fun. The berg yeah, whores. This day, uh, in this day and age, they'd be known as the berg sex workers. <laughs> that's right. And the royal order of the purple palette, very, uh, you know, swanky wanky. Uh, and then, actually, there was a fourth group. This group was called the Angry Men. Okay. <laughs> I would be steering clear of that group. No. And here's why they were called the Angry Men. They were called the Angry Men because of that situation, which you guys are sure both familiar with, have experienced in the past, where you take a real nice bottle of wine mm-hmm. to a dinner mm-hmm. and everyone else just brings, like, plonk. Ugh. Oh, my God. That happens to me frequently. Yeah. Yeah. You bring a 1962 chateau over the floor Absolutely. and then you get there and then they're like, everyone else has just got Aldi. Yeah. yeah. Chris is in the corner pissing into a bottle. Yeah. And saying, here you go, guys. Here's putting my a, contribution. Putting a cork on and, and then fucking taking the piss there, Chris. And you're Fuck like, you. guys, I thought we took the Berg whores seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That happens and all the time. So the angry men, are they the people... That are angry about that yeah, situation. They get angry at that situation because oh, okay. they they love good wine and they they you know they want to how share angry, it with everyone. How angry do you reckon they get? They smash the bottle and start threatening people with a glass. I assume so. <laughs> well, they had nicknames, and uh, one of the group members, his nickname was Mister Angry. Wow! If you're the angriest of the angry men, sounds like you're a terrifying person. Yeah, I'd be seeking some therapy. I reckon. Yeah. Some other nicknames were Big Boy. <laughs> I want to be big boy. <laughs> <laughs> big big boy has the, the same kind of speech yeah. issues as the Berg Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm big boy. big boy and I'd like a, a cheese bug whore. <laughs> Extra cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the, another member, Hollywood Jeff. <laughs> okay, I'd like to be yeah, Hollywood, Hollywood Jeff. Hollywood Jeff, 100%. Oh, okay, that leaves me to be Mr. Angry. You're not Mr. <laughs> Angry and I'm big boy. And I'm Hollywood Jeff. And Big Boy, is, is it spelt with an I or a Y? It's a Y, but guess how Hollywood Jeff is spelt. Oh, we're talking, we're go, I'm going You don't have to spell Hollywood. I'm going um, J. Yes. E double F. Fine, I'm a, I'm a G-E. Okay, no. It's J-E-F one F. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, as in two Fs, J-E-F one F after the F? Yeah. Double F? <laughs> J E F and then one F. And then like, that's how he spells it on the phone. All right, it's Jeff. J E F. One F. Okay. So Jeff. Jeff. Hollywood Jeff. I like this guy already. That's so good. Hollywood, Hollywood Jeff. Jeff. He he's actually a, a film. He is from Hollywood. Okay, so that makes sense. Because they're in. Yeah, let's not forget we're in LA at the moment or California. Mm. And Jeff Hollywood Jeff is a guy called Jeff Levy, and uh, he wrote some uh, films. That are, such as the Ghoulies. The Ghoulies. Do you know the Ghoulies? It rings no. a bell. He also wrote are you Ghoul- Ghoulies, Ghoulies 2. <laughs> Ghoulies 2. And this time it's personal. He also wrote Ghoulies 3. <laughs> Back in the habit. <laughs> Close. Ghoulies go to college. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote Ghoulies 4. And uh, But he, this guy's, I think he's had a long career in, in Hollywood. Ghoulies, just as a little aside, gets eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow! Out of, that out of <laughs> that's a standard percentage <laughs> system. Eight. That's that's honestly hard I've to also, beat. I've just I, I was googling Ghoulies because it ring it was ringing a bell. But what's come up is the it's a um, vulgar slang in British for a testicle. Okay. <laughs> Or it's informal Australian for a stone or pebble. Oh, so in Australia we're like, look at that beautiful ghoulie, and our British friends are like the fuck <laughs> testicle. So I'm I'm gonna guess our um, British listeners were having a good time there as we kept saying ghoulies a lot. Ghoulies. That's your testies. Yeah, whack them in the ghoulies. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. It but is a, a, a stone or pebble, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, it's nice. It's. <laughs> but um. Well, maybe, <coughs> maybe I need to see a doctor. 
<laughs> it's a little bit hard. <laughs> I don't know how much information you've got on Ghoul is there. Do you have any? I have one. I have a little quote from the from uh, one of the reviewers, and I, I just I looked it up very briefly. The thing that stuck out most to me is it came out one year after Gremlins. Oh wow! Okay, but if you read the plot description of Ghoulies, it sounds almost identical <laughs> <laughs> to Gremlins. That's, that's great. Uh, but here's the quote that I found. Uh, so this is from one of the reviewers. The Ghoulies themselves, foul reptilian little beings coated with some obscene, glittering mucus-like moisture. Yep, <laughs> testicles. Have a certain <laughs> nauseating charm. From there, however, it's a steep slide downhill. <laughs> okay, yeah, I definitely don't know the ghoulies. But 8%. But, so that, that's Hollywood Jeff. And it was apparently it's a big hit. The budget on Wikipedia says $5 million, Box office, 35 oh Really? Oh, my God. In the 80s. So they killed it. That's crazy. Maybe, obviously, piggybacking off the success of Gremlins. Yeah. But enough to to carry, sustain four ghoulies. Exactly. And, <laughs> and two before they go to college. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, elementary school, um, high school, <laughs> then college. <laughs> yeah, Ghoulies postgraduate. <laughs> post doctorate. Ghoulies settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Ghoulies retirement village. <laughs> They're really milking this. <laughs> but it sounds like it was such a success, it's really lined Hollywood Jeff's pockets. It has lined his pockets because mm. he's part of the angry man. He's in these, these like big bourgeois... Wine groups where they're just having big dinner parties. So the reason we're getting into their nicknames is because Rudy Kernuan, he had a nickname himself. And so as we've pointed out, he's a really he's become fond of this ultra luxury uh, producer or like wine from Burgundy. Mm. And there's one producer in particular called Domaine de la Romani Conti. Mm. Domaine de la Romani Conti. Mm. And now that it- is sometimes abbreviated to DRC. And because Rudy is particularly fond of DRC, he becomes known as Dr. Conti. Okay, see what they've done there. I wish they'd gone for Nudie Rudy. Yeah. (laughs) That would have been way better. True. Dr. Conti's kind of cool, I guess. (laughs) Now, that is a good nickname. But Big Boy. Big Boy. (laughs) And and Nudie Rudy, they... Yeah, you can see them together in a yes in a group chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're the kind of people you get introduced to just by their nicknames, and then like years after knowing them, you're like, his name's Steve. You know, it's one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the? Hell? We've got a group chat with with Matt, Jess, and go on chat where we have nicknames and yeah. we change them frequently. Well, not it, honestly, it's infrequent to the point that I've forgotten what th- they come from. What are our current nicknames? Um, yours. I think it's Hollywood Jeff. Oh, you are currently I am Grot. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the weirdest thing is when you post, uh, you never see your own nickname. No. You no, that's right. so, so I, I forgot. That I have that. no idea what mine is. Okay, I can tell you. Um, I'm trying to find Matt's. I can't remember. He, he's <laughs> he's Sugar the horse. Sugar. It's a race, an Irish racing horse I did a topic on, and you are I Am Grot. And you are the big fella. <laughs> <laughs> so See? big boy. Big yeah. boy. I'm obviously, I must have one time said I want to be big fella, and now I am. And now I want to change to big boy. Are you, have you changed your style here with Jeff? <laughs> yeah. J-E-F. One F. Can you change your own? Yeah, you can. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Grot. When did I say that? I don't know. I, don't I think know. I was Grotty Boy or something like yeah. that. Yeah. There you go. And instead of I am Groot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am Grot. Anyway, a bit of an insight yeah, yeah. into our fun group <laughs> exactly, chat. <yeah. laughs> Where the magic is made. <laughs> uh, so a bit of context about Burgundy, by the way. This is what I wanted to tell you before, but I couldn't find it in my report. <laughs> Burgundy, it's a dauntingly complicated region. It has a 40-year hierarchy of vineyards, and ownership of the vineyards is divided among all of these different wineries. <clears throat> and the critic, Robert Parker, who's a big wine He's like the Hall- James Halliday of US <laughs> wine, <laughs> if you know James Halliday. Uh, the critic Robert Parker, Parker called Burgundy a minefield. Oh. Oh, wow. And I never found out if that was a typo and he meant to say wine field. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love mine. I love mine. He's just trying to explain what a vineyard is. Yeah. It's like a, a wine field. Yeah. Oh, so it's very difficult to navigate. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, the the bottles in the late 90s, like a bottle of a 
fancy bottle of Burgundy it cost about $400. But by the time Rudy and his gang got involved in this fraud, they were selling for as much as $13,000. For a bottle of wine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay, so we'll get into that. If you've uh, rocked up to a party with a $13,000 bottle of wine and everyone else has bought in like... $5 Aldi. Yeah, like you would be mistaken. I can understand. <laughs> and they and your friends would be the ones going like, no, but Aldi's won a bunch of wine awards. Yeah. Like, they're actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, okay, but it's not $13,000 yeah. good, okay? This one comes from a minefield. <laughs> <laughs> I risked my life for this wine. <laughs> this mine. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I thought you brought it to share. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to drink that. <laughs> yeah, it's like driving a Porsche. Yeah. Yeah, you'd it? be worried about it. Yeah, when absolutely. you're stuck in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got $13,000 in the booth. Yeah, come on. <laughs> also, you're just going to piss it out, aren't you? True. It's all piss in the end. You know what I mean? It's crazy. <laughs> That's what the big whores would say. <laughs> so, uh, Kearney one, he's, uh, as he said, he... he, he Pretty much tasted his first sip of wine in 2000, celebrating the end of the Millennium Bug Scare. But within a few years, he's all of his friends are amazed at how well he can taste wine. Wow. He becomes a freakishly gifted taster. People say that he has a photographic aromatic memory. Wow. Wow. So I wouldn't think that's photographic. No. <laughs> no we would just say he has an aromatic <laughs> I remember what the inside of my mouth looked like when I was tasting this wine. Those taste buds were going off. <laughs> but that's actually a video of the inside of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. The photo's a bit static. You can't, you can't tell, yeah. but they are going off. They are going it's off. It's like a picture of fireworks. You're sort of like, I, I can understand yeah. what's happened there, but I'm not seeing the whole process. <laughs> But yeah, so he could he could he had really good tasting. He could uh, tell with great accuracy the vintage of a wine or where it yeah where it came from, which particular winery, which is pretty amazing because he's tasting some expensive wines and usually it's like from experience and memory that you have to that you you would have to go through like a rolodex of mm. different wines that you've tasted and be like oh this is the nineteen ninety whatever wow nineteen sixty two big boy oh. Vintage. So he, because of his skills, he he starts going to these auctions. There's a guy called John Capon, who uh, his family run like a little wine store in Manhattan, and then him and uh, Rudy, a bunch of people, they start doing these auctions where they're selling like some of the rarest wines. And it, it's it in the if you watch sour grapes. They have footage of these auctions. It feels like investment bankers on the floor of the stock market. Oh, like, wow. Or it's like a fancy like Christie's auction where they're doing <coughs> expensive art and like real prestigious stuff and wow. people are yelling out and it's crazy. And so he starts buying some of the rarest wines from the 20th century and he spends as much as a million dollars a month Whoa. on wine. Whoa. And uh, that's – I'm not sure if you're aware – a lot of <laughs> money. That is a lot. And when, like this is in the early 2000s. Yeah, so even, yeah, exactly. It's a lot of money. I That's a lot of money people, now. Yeah. We didn't know what millions were in the early 2000s. No. <laughs> you imagine like a million dollar house in the early 2000s would have been mansion, huge, big property. Yeah. Minimum one swimming pool and a tennis court. Minimum. <laughs> now, that's an apartment. Yeah. You know what I mean? No swimming pools. No swimming pool or a shared one. You'd be lucky to have a... View oh, yeah. of a swimming pool. Or a balcony you could fit a table on. <laughs> you know, it might be one you could get one yeah. seat on. No tennis court. Not even a table tennis. No, absolutely not. <laughs> table. Not, not even a table. A million dollars a month on wine. Yeah, but and, and people just assume it's because he's coming from his family. Mm. Right, right. So he's no buying, buying it at the auction rather than holding the auction. He's just going there and... Yeah, he's just one of the participants. Going, I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah. it's like at, at this stage as a... The late 90s, bottles of wine weren't going for that much. Capon starts these auctions and then Rudy starts bidding crazy at these auctions and it's like inflating the price. Wow. Oh, right. So someone's like $100 and he's like, $100,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot, Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out all his friend's keys <laughs> yeah. and at the bottom of that, he pulls out $100,000 <laughs> in cash. <laughs> Uh, Cape on part of the thing, it, it's sort of like this auction culture became real like sexy and it, it – Transformed wine. It used to be these old Kamanjani men, and like like a Matt sipping Stewart on their type. wines. Yeah, mm-hmm. sipping on their wines and swirling. And but now it becomes this like fast trader pace energy. 
and uh, John Capon, he had plenty of flair in his auctioneering. He used to have tasting notes like not smoky or oaky or tannins. He would say sweaty, but good sweaty, like hot sex. (laughs) (laughs) You want a bottle of hot sex? Yeah. (laughs) $100,000. $100,000. What are you, a fucking virgin? <laughs> sweaty, but not bad sweaty, like stuck on the tube in London. <laughs> no, that was, I've just added that. Um, <laughs> That's uh, good stuff, though. Some others he had were like rich acids that linger like call girls at a casino. Wow. Okay. So very descriptive and yeah. very, yeah, a bit of flair. Mm. So at this same time, Rudy's buying all of these expensive wines and then he begins hosting these tastings of rare wines with other collectors. So he would buy all the wines from these very rare vintages and then they, the groups, the mist, the Angry Men and the Berg Hors, they would have these lavish dinners and uh, Rudy would share his wines with people. And over time it, it became known as the guy with the greatest seller on earth. Whoa. Uh-huh. So you want to get an invite to Exactly. That, that you want to be part of the Angry Men. Some of us would say the comedy seller greatest seller on <laughs> yeah earth. but no no <laughs> absolutely not no it was rudy cooney ones anyway so oh. he <clears throat> around this time him and his friends go on a four-day binge at crew which is like a fancy restaurant i think in the napa valley uh, and it became emblematic of this wine culture that's taken hold. They but don't leave for four days. No. The wait staff are like, please. Please, come on. I have children. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to sleep. I don't care. Bring your children. I'll put them in my pockets. <laughs> I have the deepest pockets. They'll be fine. They'll love it in there. <laughs> They'll be jingling and jangling. I'm imagining his pants. <laughs> Here's what I'm imagining. It's just all one pocket. Like, it's all pocket. So, like, it's two. It's, His legs are in the pocket. It's like it's double lined, but instead of a hem, it's just, like, it's just looped over. It's just all pocket. But if you want to get something right down from the bottom, it's a nightmare. It is a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> you pull your pants all the way up. And he's so noisy every step he makes because everything's <laughs> jingling and jangling. But it's just all pocket. But people don't ask about his origins. <laughs> I'd be rude. He's... <laughs> Uh, so, so they're at this dinner, and by the end of the last in- evening, they've consumed so many fancy wines. A 1945 Mouton Rothschild, a 1961 Jabolais Hermitage La Chapelle. You're doing great, Thank but you. I also wouldn't know if you were making this up. Yeah. The, I, the ones that I made up were before, I think, when I said <laughs> a, a 1992... <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A 1992 something. God, he's good. Gosh. Slips right past us. I think I said a 1960 Chateau Floor. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, which is a 12th man joke. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Chateau Floor. I once had to, when I was in uh, uni, I was in one of the theatre plays there. And I mean, you were studying drama, so that makes thank sense. Thank you. Yes. But then there was also like the theatre club or something. Oh, yeah. It's called. yeah, yeah. The Theatre Society, and I was in a short play, and I had to play like a, a wanky waiter, and I can, I'll never forget. I had to say uh, an Antonori Toscana Santa Cristina Rosanto Sangiovese. Oh my god, that's too many Which, words! I don't know if that's a real thing or if that was just the writer having a bit of fun. That's so many words. Do you ever bust that out at it when you're at a, <laughs> and at I'll, a restaurant? Yeah. I'll take the <laughs> and they're like, "What?" Antonori Toscana Santa Cristina Rosanto. Santa Vasi. Too does many it, words. Muscle memory does it come out when you're just at La Pocata? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so is that a Diet Coke or what do you want? <laughs> so over this four night, four day binge, they rack up a bill of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Get that's fuck too much. And, isn't and again, the, whole- the wait staff are making minimum wage. Oh, man. <laughs> if that tip isn't twenty five thousand dollars, yeah. Well, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't have the details of the tip. Like What's better it? But, have tipped. But, do you, do you feel like, we, I don't know, maybe you would know this being around wine a bit more than us around, but with these kind of wines, isn't the whole point to have a little bit to taste it or whatever? But if you're just having bottle after bottle after bottle, you're obviously off your chops, yeah. right, for four days. You're not tasting Are you appreciating it, it mm. you know, by the by the 15th At that bottle? Point, you may as well be orders? having the Aldi $5 yeah. bottles. Well, that's a great point because Rudy, he, he's a bit of a slacker. He's got this all this money that's seemingly endless and he would often sleep until the afternoon He's not an organized guy. He always arrived late to things and he and uh, he very rarely pays the bills on time. Also, it's said that he often fell asleep at his tastings and his dinners. 
<laughs> and then he would just not off for 20 or 30 minutes and then he'd wake up and just start drinking again. Oh, he has a problem. Yep. So they probably, you're right, I think they just like the, they, they're the opposite of sour grapes. They've got it. And those grapes are sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetest banana of all. <laughs> I don't think he gets it. <laughs> yeah, you can say any fruit after sour, right? <laughs> a sour banana. So they rack up this bill of $250,000 and Colonel Wan, here's the thing, he puts down his American Express card, he pays for the whole thing, the four-day binge, and then he makes a curious request of the cruise staff. Uh-oh. More curious than asking them to stick around for four days straight. <laughs> I would not. I would not be doing that for anybody. Like, I don't care if the restaurant's about to make a quarter of a million dollars. I really don't. I'd no. be like, "Fuck you, get out! <laughs> yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> Too far. Or? That's so good. Never come back here. <laughs> for even requesting for us to stay open a minute later. For four days. Fuck you. It says we close at six on the door. We're <laughs> fucking closing at six, okay? <laughs> Take you and your loud fucking pants. <laughs> yes. What's in there? It dangles Get out. Get my children out of your pants <laughs> and then leave. Um, okay. So, so a weird, weird request. request. I know. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited and nervous. Okay, he makes a weird request. He asks the restaurant to send him all of the empty bottles that they have just consumed. Okay. So he's he asks for the bottles. He doesn't say why, and then he's made, every time they go back to crew for the next two or three years, he always requests these bottles, and the restaurant just send him. I think he pretends that it's for like, like a collection, or uh, yeah, something. like a mm-hmm. um, souvenir. Yeah, I'm gonna make a stained glass window out of these or some shit. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. That'd be quite nice quite for cool. a wine lover. Yeah, that'd be a beautiful you know centerpiece of a house, yeah, architecturally yeah. lovely. Yeah. But I don't think. That's what's going on I don't think that's what he's doing at all. No, I think he's going to do something with those bottles. I'm seeing that you've got a juice bottle there, David. Would you mm. Would you like to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll fix yourself and you can take it at the end. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm currently drinking a orange mango passion fruit juice and it is... Already looks like stained glass. <laughs> it is so thick. It's really thick. I can't drink it because before I was literally having to chew and I was worried that people at home could hear me chewing my juice because <laughs> there's passion fruit seeds all throughout it. But that's a great conversation starter. Yeah. This is so thick. That'd be really nice in people's headphones as they're <laughs> yeah. going about their lives. So I'm going to refrain. How often while you've been drinking it have people been like, oh, can I have a piece of gum? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any gum. <laughs> Joel's baby. Just a thick juice. <laughs> a reference to a early 2000s ad there. <laughs> So he's getting the empty bottles mm. sent to him. Anyway, the auctions keep continuing and Kearney One keeps buying all of these wines and then they decide to list his wine like because he's got the greatest seller on earth and start auctioning it at these auctions and he's selling like record amounts of wine. Mm-hmm. At one point he sells uh, wine at an auction in 2006 and he sold it for $24.7 million. What? Mm-hmm. Is, is that in not, w- not one bottle, but like but in, his an, in one auction? Yeah, in one auction. Holy crap! And the previous record was like ten million or something. So he's just blown it out of the roof. And it's because they. So I think they. What happens is they they'll list these wines in a in a booklet and they send it out to all the rich people who like mm. to buy wine. And then they f- see his cellar and they see all the names in there and they start frothing over it. And then it just becomes all competitive. And, you know, the heat of an auction, yes. all these e- big egos, people just want to know that they own the best yeah, one. So I and, got it. Yeah, exactly. So he's – him and they basically because he's got this crazy seller that he's been amassing, it just like everyone wants. Really. And everyone knows he's got the good stuff, so yeah. it's got to be good. He's really made a name for himself. Everyone's lo- in love with this guy. He's so wow. charismatic. He's always got the best wine. He knows so much. He's got great tasting ability. It's great. In 2007, he throws a 60th birthday party for his mother at uh, Malice, which I think is a, another posh restaurant in uh, LA. He rented out the entire place and he supplied all of the wines from his cellar. And among the guests, he's got Hollywood Jeff, obviously. Of course. But that's not the highest of the high. It goes higher than the guy that yeah. wrote Ghoulish or whatever it was called. Ghoulish. Ghoulish. Ghoulish one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Ghoulish is when it's sort of, you know, your testicles are like. <laughs> A little bit pebbly, but also a little bit normal. Um, one of his best friends is uh, this guy called Sarkisian, 
who was the producer of uh, Rush Hour. Oh, okay. So he's got proper Hollywood elite. And at the 60th birthday party for his mother, one of the guests, you may have heard of him, actor Jackie Chan. Oh, my God. Jackie Chan himself. Oh, my yep. God. And at one point, Jackie Chan stands on a chair holding uh, a Jeroboam, which uh, I don't know what that is. I think it's a kind of glass. Jeroboam? Yeah, have you heard of that? No. Jerry Can. Oh, it's a bottle. It's a bottle. It's the biggest bottle. It's got. It's four times the size of it. Oh. So there's like a Magnum, well, big which is big, and then it's like a Jeroboam. It's bigger than a Magnum. I think so. Wow. I'm just putting Jeroboam versus Magnum. Yeah. Bigger than a Magnum. It's bigger. It's Whoa. a double Magnum. Whoa! It's two times the size of. So a Jackie Magnum. Chan is just standing on a table holding. Yeah, one he's of those. famous holding for stunts. It. That's true. He's holding a, a Jeroboam on the of Chateau Petrus, and he shouts, "Rudy, you are the best!" Oh my god! And everyone cheers. Wow. So Rudy is like, but it's also his Rudy's mum's party. <laughs> yeah, so maybe Jackie Chan's just being nice. You can't slay. No, Rudy. I know, but I'm also saying like, oh, he's stealing the limelight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be Rudy's mum. You are the best. You, you produce know? the best. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why is it all about Rudy? <laughs> Anyway, wow. Okay, sure. I've just looked up wine bottles just really quickly. And there's a wine bottle. This is from spiralsellers.co.uk, which lists all the different sizes. Finally, right at the end of the wine bottle size scale, a Mel Chisadek is the king of all wine bottles, holding a fantastic 30 litres or 40 bottles. I think I went to primary school with Mel (laughs) (laughs) Chisadek. It stands an impressive four feet tall. What? (laughs) You can, wouldn't be able to, How would you get the wine out? You can serve 240 glasses of wine. How, though? You, you have to just, like... You'd have to pump it. Yeah, pump or ladle. <laughs> ladling? <laughs> Imagine ladling wine out. A uh, ladle for you, sir? You'd but have, even, to, you'd what, have you, to put... Do you tip it over to ladle it? Or I think it would, you'd have to have, like, a keg, like... Yeah. A tap on You'd have the to put a tap it. on it. Or you'd... Yeah, you'd have to slice the top off. Wide enough that you could get a ladle into it. Yeah. Sometimes they do the saber. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Show you a photo of a, of a, of a oh. And she's drinking it with the world's biggest glass as <laughs> Oh, well. my God. I didn't even see the glass the in glass that picture. The glass is like, oh, it must be five foot. <laughs> it's taller. How than are you this. drinking that? Is that Melchizedek? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> with her namesake. She's changed. <laughs> she looks good. Yeah, she used to be bigger than the, bu- the bottle. <laughs> Wow. So he's he's so a man Jackie Chan. That's great that Jackie's there having Jackie's a bit of fun there, on the chair. Hollywood's there. They all know Rudy. He's slicked back hair and he's fun and then he's sleeping and then he's fun again. <laughs> <laughs> he's sleeping for 20 minutes at his own party. Do you reckon that Hollywood Jeff is like trying to smooze Jackie to try and get him in Ghoulies 5? Of course. Trying to get him on board. He's trying to get Ghoul- Jackie Chan in the Ghoulies franchise. <laughs> Ghoulies go to wine club. Uh, so now we're now we're going to get into the fraud part. There's a few characters you need to know about the fraud part. The first guy, his name is Bill Cock. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll remember Co- that. I will. <laughs> Bill Cock. Bill yeah. Cock. I didn't. In my head, I was like, "Don't say Cock." But, but I, how yeah. do we how do we say it? Bill Coke. Coke. Has have you spelled? heard of the Have you heard of the Coke brothers? No. K O C H. Ah. They're like yeah. these American brothers. Oh, they like big time investors. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So their father is this guy called Fred Coke, and he started Coke Industries, which was at the time was a new cracking method for the refinement of crude oil and turning it into gasoline. And when I first read that, I thought it said it didn't say new cracking method. I thought it said it was a cracking new method. <laughs> You're like, oh, <laughs> like, okay, yeah, okay. Bit of editorializing <laughs> there from Google. All right. <laughs> uh, and so Coke Industries is huge. Two of the brothers inherited. The business. Well, I think one of them is his name's David Coke, mm-hmm. which is spelt exactly the same as David Kosh. Oh shit! Oh my god! Like- but no relation. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, he he exits the Coke Industries. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He just takes his billions and leaves the business. He's a bit like Con from Succession, <laughs> I guess. Just goes away. So goes, he's goes part of the ranch. family. He's got all the money of the family, but he just doesn't want to be part of the business. Oh, yeah. And so he spends his life acquiring like impressionist art, antique furniture, and then you guessed it, vintage wine. I didn't guess that. He's got. I a, thought it was going to be motorbikes. <laughs> oh, damn it! I shouldn't be so presumptuous. Yeah. <laughs> Always assume I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, he has an incredible collection. Some of the bottles that he has, he has four bottles, and you can see this in the documentary Sour Grapes. 
Not to be confused with sour bananas. <laughs> Another great doco, though. <laughs> robbed at Khan. <laughs> Uh, but they were only robbed at Khan because they didn't have locks on their car. <laughs> <laughs> they were stopped in traffic. and uh, no. So, um, <laughs> including four bottles uh, from the 1730s. Okay. Sorry, did you say 1730s? <laughs> yeah. Which were said to be once owned by Thomas Jefferson. Right. Thomas Jefferson. So, obviously, Thomas Jefferson never got to drink them. And the, But they can't taste good anymore, surely. Yeah. I think it's just the prestige of being like, hey, Thomas Jefferson owned this wine. <laughs> I didn't drink it. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> See this orange juice? Benjamin Franklin's orange juice, this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Bill Cokey, he's a bit like a, he's just like, he is like Connor. He's like a bit incompetent and he's just like a bumbling guy, rich guy. Rich guy energy, but he doesn't, he's sort of, there's a bit of naivety and he's kind of like a bit sweet and you just feel like the world would take advantage of him if he didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> so he, Except he, they just do take advantage of him. Of his money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he survived. They, he puts these bottles down and they've got like TRJ on it or something, or t- THJ, and he's like, see, Thomas Jefferson owned them. <laughs> but then someone points out to him that they this particular winery wasn't even making wine in 1730s. <laughs> so, and he's paid like millions of, I think he paid $4 million for oh these bottles God. of wine. And the internet existed then. You could have. You, that's a really quick, easy thing to fact check. Yeah, Cock. Exactly. Come on. This is Al Gore was alive then. Yeah. The internet existed. Yep. You could fact check. You can just do a quick little check. You don't even need to get like <laughs> your your team onto it. You could have just done that on your smartphone straight yeah. away. <laughs> but he's a naive guy. The yeah. world's taking advantage of him. Yeah, yeah. It says that this winery started last week. <laughs> that's what awesome. That Tom, Thomas Jefferson was really on it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He was a lot older than I thought. <laughs> It's written on this bottle in like a uh, Spyrak. I mean, what's that pen called? That would have been funny. If Put a Sharpie. It. Sharpie. <laughs> Spyrak is the book that you. It turns out that it's just a drawing in a book. <laughs> <laughs> See this wine? Owned by Thomas Jefferson. 1730s. Hmm? It's really old. Tastes, tastes pretty good, I reckon. <laughs> just licking paper. Yeah. Okay. He's, I don't think he's that stupid. <laughs> uh, so he ends up suing this guy. And uh, I think he wins the lawsuit, the guy who sold him those Jefferson mm-hmm. bottles. <laughs> right. But then he becomes obsessed with the idea of counterfeit wine. Oh. And he has all this money and he's like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I reckon there's other counterfeit wine in circulation. So Bill Coke is an important player. Wow. Gotcha. And he's got, story. he's got even deeper pockets. He's got the deepest pockets. Well, he's wearing flares. Because his parents come from Coke Industries. Yeah. yeah. That's one drink versus another. Yes. Different Coke, actually. <laughs> another guy, his name is Laurent Ponsol. Oh, my God. Incredible. Uh, he's from Burgundy himself. He's a trim, energetic 58-year-old, and he's disarmingly frank and has a wry sense of humour. Mm-hmm. Um, hubba hubba. Yeah. <laughs> He's a real catch, this guy, actually. He's got this sort of silver fox look. Yes. Over the years, his pastimes have included mountain climbing, Mm -hmm. race car driving, (laughs) and stunt flying. Right. And so, like, this is the type of person that you go, that is sexy. Yeah. But then you actually try to, like, date him and it's exhausting. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want to watch a movie. Can you come down from that mountain? (laughs) (laughs) Get get down here. Get down here. We've got reservations at six. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, I'll fly then. No! <laughs> yeah, Get in like, the car! The car like, Sorry, babe, can't make it tonight. I'm going to space. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, come on! <laughs> Fucking hell. I've made this reservation. <laughs> but some people fly. He stunt flies. Yeah. yeah no, that's crazy. <laughs> He's not even going to space for the to scenery to see the Earth. He's, He's just, just going to jump off the rocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's wearing one of those wingsuits, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. He's the Red Bull wingsuit <laughs> from space. God, it's exhausting. <laughs> But I love him so much. God, his hair is silver. Fuck so that guy. beautiful. But he would be like, this is very fun. Because he's disarmingly frank. You know yeah. what I mean? He would, <laughs> he would tell you exactly how That it is. is disarming. <laughs> um, and so these days, <clears throat> he has a nickname for himself. <laughs> Always, Always good. good. Always, Always good. good. <laughs> he calls himself the head of the French Bureau of the FBI. <laughs> It's quite a nickname. Last but one, mate. What the does the FBI stand for? Any guesses? Oh, he's got a different meaning of yeah, FBI? Yeah. It stands for fake bottle investigation. Oh. <laughs> he got business cards made up. Hey, he's, got a, he's got a rice sense of humour. I mean, it's better than female body inspector, so I'll take it. 
that t-shirt <laughs> yeah, you always yeah, see oh. gross men wearing oh my god they got from the vic market yeah. oh my god they're always gross <laughs> <laughs> this is better a fake bottle inspector i'll take that but it does sound like a little child has just given themselves a, oh, I'm the head of the French FBI. And you're like, yeah, good on you, little Pierre. Good yeah, on you, that's yes. great, mate. Good stuff. You've been stuff. watching a few American movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this guy's like a, a multi-millionaire. <laughs> Surely he should just drop the French Bureau bit. I'm yeah. the head of the French Bureau of the French Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> <laughs> drop the... Anyway. Uh, do you ever... Do you've, Have you ever once, Jess, seen the female body inspector... <laughs> Shirt and be like, okay, I, I, guess, I, I guess I am part of your jurisdiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> and I've started undressing in the middle of a supermarket. Don't worry about showing me your badge. It's huh? okay, I understand. <laughs> this happens all the time. <laughs> I know the drill. <laughs> I'm naked now. Well, all right, what do you reckon? <laughs> now I'm trying to think of other MI6. FBI's? Oh, yep. Male inspector. Well, six. <laughs> Number six. I'm, I'm the sixth one. <laughs> yeah, that's good too. Thank you. <laughs> that's good. Well, I think I feel like everyone should be inspected. <laughs> yeah, probably by doctors though. Not just random people <laughs> who bought a T-shirt. Um, so Ponzo, he, uh, he gets an email in about April 2008 and this is just after the time that Bill Coke has sued the first guy for those Thomas Jefferson bottles. He gets an email and it's a lawyer from New York and also a winnerfile. Oh. No. Uh, and he wants to know whether the Ponzo um, winery had started producing wine from Clos St. Denis, which is one of their vineyards, and whether they had started producing it basically before like the 1950s. Mm-hmm. And the answer that came back from Laurent, but uh, you know he found he finds time in between the <laughs> jet skiing and the stunt flying to repl- respond to emails. He says that <laughs> whilst paragliding, yeah. he's just emailing on his phone. He's setting off explosives, but he's just <laughs> replying to people. And he sends back a disarmingly frank reply. <laughs> But it's also quite wry. <laughs> he says that it wasn't until 1982 that they started making uh, wine at that vineyard. And Ooh. so uh, from there they realised that this auction house was selling all of these bottles from the period of 1945 to 1971, um, which if you know anything about time, oh, hang on, would not be possible. Oh, because they they didn't even start making the wine until 1982. Oh, at my that God. particular vineyard is this Rudy's auction house, or like the same place that he sells? It's his the stuff same at? place that he's selling. Yeah, his wine right. Through. And that place is just selling bottles that do not exist. Yeah, okay. uh, and so that's basically counterfeiting of wine. Is uh, you take the bottle, you can either put the la- copy the label, and then re put a new label on that bottle because those bottles from that vintage look a certain way or whatever. Mm -hmm. They look aged. Or you can keep that label on it and then uh, you've already drunk it. You can mix different wines together and pour them in and then resell that bottle. Yeah. Just a little... In just case an, you were thinking of getting idea. into it. Yeah. Okay, right, fantastic. Or You I, did say at the start you're fans of fraud. Yeah, that's right. But it doesn't sound like the third option is just create a wine that never existed in the first place. That is a third option. To be you're like, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it's from the, that place in France and you just looked up one online. But that seems, <laughs> that seems really dumb and way riskier because you're assuming that nobody else knows anything about wine, but lots of people do. Yeah, you're so selling- you're going to get caught easier. So I think what they're relying on here is that these wines are so... So rare that people wouldn't have tasted them before, mm. and that so you you can like, and I suppose, and also you're working on the reputation of like, hey, we sell all these these great wines. Exactly. Of course, we yeah. we know more than you, and people want to believe they bought the yeah. right thing, and, the and pe- then they'll open it and they'll drink it and they'll be like, I'm chewing this wine. <laughs> yeah, is this actually juice? From- <laughs> it's got passion <laughs> yeah. fruit in it. But I think, but once you've paid two million dollars for a bottle of wine, you want it to be so good that you're probably. Just going, yeah, yes, I do have a, a good palate. Yeah, I, you just I convince good. yourself. Yeah, yeah. I can taste the difference. I can. <laughs> yeah, I really can. The $15 Aldi one tastes very different to me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Ponzo starts to suspect that something is afoot and he goes to one of these auctions and at the auction he meets Rudy Kernowan 
Because Rudy, he knows that it's come from Rudy's cellar, mm-hmm. the greatest cellar of all time. Of course. Mm. Or the greatest cellar in the world. Uh, and so he meets him, but he doesn't think that Rudy is necessarily doing anything wrong. He just wants to know where Rudy's getting these bottles. And over, t- he has lunch with Rudy, and Rudy doesn't give him very too many answers. Mm. Ponzo sort of smells her out, but he doesn't. He just goes back to France. He comes back. Uh, How he- does he fly back to France? Does he just like <laughs> stop j- flying? Jetpack all yeah, the way. Yeah. <laughs> Jetpack. The whole way. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> and then Took he lands. Ages. Yeah, it's dumb. He lands and he tells his wife, I probably wouldn't do that again. <laughs> she says, that was Frank. <laughs> no, it was just a lot of sort of win. Yeah. I didn't care for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for being so frank. <laughs> so he he suspects Rudy isn't being completely honest with him. He flies back. Later, oh, straight in the jetpack to have another <laughs> to have another lunch with Rudy, and he says Rudy has told him that he's bought these wines from a guy called Pak Hendra uh, in Indonesia, okay. where he's from. Yep. And remember, no one knows anything about Rudy's background. They they just know that he comes from a wealthy family. So he says Pak Hendra, and then Ponso asks, "Who is Pak Hendra? How do I get in contact with him?" And Rudy writes down two phone numbers. And the next day, Ponzo plays it all cool. They have, they enjoy the rest of the dinner. And then the next day, Ponzo calls the number and it's for an Indonesian airline. Oh. Why would he write down the number of an Indonesian? Just surely, the only number he had memorized. Yeah, um, 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 Surely, he's like, yeah, 13116, Pizza Hut delivery. Yep, <laughs> just type that into your phone. Well, I think Rudy doesn't know that Ponzo doesn't travel by plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, if you want to go to Indonesia, use the airlines. Yeah. And Ponzo's like, I've got a jetpack. I don't right? need the airline. <laughs> well, I am the airline, all right? So Ponzo uh, rings it up, finds it as it's not uh, Pak Hendra, and then he, he's he been traveling. He also travels, you know, he's a, he's a fancy wine dude. He goes to Hong Kong a lot. He calls up some of his friends in Hong Kong, asks if they know this Pak Hendra or anything. One of his friends is Indonesian and tells him that Pak actually means Mr. and Hendra is just a name like Smith. <laughs> Hendra means fake man. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, maybe right. so. Rudy was like, "Hey, if you're gonna go to Indonesia, here's the airlines. Also, don't forget to pack Hendra. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need some Hendra while you're there. <laughs> It'll come in handy." <laughs> so, uh, so Ponzo smells a rat, and he's he gets onto him. He knows now that Rudy's doing something mm. suspicious. This is where the FBI get involved. The actual FBI or the <laughs> fake bottle inspectors? <laughs> the female. <laughs> yeah, the actual FBI. Yeah. <laughs> the female bureau of intelligence. <laughs> so they the major theft squad get in charge and uh they they hit up Ponzo and together they put together this operation to get to Kearney One. By this time Kearney One's still ordering bottles, drinking bottles at crew and then getting them to send <laughs> them. But then one time they send a bottle a box of these bottles and they're damaged and Kearney One kicks up a stink. And crew, uh, they've finally had enough. Minimum wage crew are like, God, enough is enough. That's no taken them forever to just tell this guy to piss off. Yeah. The people, he's a charismatic guy. Everyone loves him. Wow. He's getting away with murder. I don't love him. Well, it feels like there's got to be an easier way to get the bottles of wine rather mm. than going to like a restaurant or a cafe and buying them. Can't you just import them yourself? You would think so. Well, that, that, he has been buying most of the wine. Yep. Yeah. I guess that in this way you do get to enjoy them and then publicly say, look, no, I, I drank that. That's not that's not my wine. Oh, these are wines that he's bought that they take to the restaurant yep. and then he asks for them to oh. keep the bottles. Yeah, sure. Right. He's not buying them from the restaurant. No. He's oh, no deal. wonder they're pissed off. They're not even getting a cut of the sale yeah. of the wine. <laughs> no, nah, fuck this He's guy. paying a $2 corky fee per person and then staying for four days. He's bringing the wines and still spending $250,000. Yeah. So what's he doing? He's buying lots of small Maybe. chips That's for the table. That's a good point. <sighs> lots of small chips for everybody. <laughs> and a big chips in the middle. Thank yeah. you. Chips for the table. I think it's all the extra cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> extra cheese. <laughs> At this point, they're starting to suspect that something's, something's gone wrong. Kearney one, all of these wines are in circulation now and a lot of people are like finding out that the labels don't really add up. The bottles seem strange. Mm-hmm. There's some bottles that are like look old and vintage, but the labels are completely smooth. So the cork is like kind of rotting, but the the label it looks like it's just freshly printed. Right. And other people are like, "Huh, 
This says it's the only one that's ever been made, and I remember drinking it with you last night. <laughs> How is huh. it for sale? That's crazy. That's weird. But his friends love him. Yeah. Hollywood Jeff. <laughs> Hollywood Jeff is a big fan. Hollywood Jeff's interviewed at the end of this Sour Grapes, and he's like, I don't believe he could do Really? A, yeah. They don't believe he could do any wrong. Rudy, it's a, he couldn't even wake up. He's falling asleep at the table. Yeah, come on. He's not the master. What do they call him? Oh. Dr. C. Dr. Conti. Love it. So the FBI, they chase him down and they get a sniff that he's actually, something's up. They go to his house and they in the house, they find like thousands of bottles, empty bottles, bottles of cheap wine. They find thousands of labels, like a printer press that and funnels. And uh, and even despite that, Hollywood Jeff is like, <laughs> no way. Whoa, they've snuck this in, man. This is framing. They framed him. There's no way I think he could do this. So it's it's really because of this Bill Coke fella, because of mm. all the money he paid. He paid a private investigator. And this private investigator, he's very proud of the fact that he doesn't drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> he's a beer drinker. <laughs> Does he talk about that a lot? Yeah. I don't really like any of this wine shit. <laughs> it's grape juice. Um, and so eventually they charge uh, Kearney one. They charge him for two things. The first is he's been in the US illegally because he came on a student visa. And never left. And he just never left. <gasps> wow. He's been hanging out with the Berg whores, but he shouldn't even be there. He's been there for a while, hasn't he? And it's not like he doesn't know the number for the Indonesian airline. Yeah, he knows it. <laughs> Off the top of his head. If he wanted to, to get up. home, he could. Bill Coke uh, files a lawsuit against Kearney One and uh, he alleges that he swindled him for about $8.9 million. That's quite a lot of swindling. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's dollars. It's a lot of swindling. It's a lot of swindling. Yeah, so the FBI charge him. They eventually they find all his bottles. They charge him and he gets put in prison for 20 years. Oh, that's but a long time. The fa- My favourite bit of this story is that Lauren Ponzo does not believe that Kearney one acted alone. Oh. Two days after his arrest, Ponzo logs on to a website called The Wine Diarist. While he's skydiving. (laughs) Check it in. Yeah, he's keeping a diary. And he says it's impossible that Rudy had knowledge of this many wineries, that he could fake like so many vintage shatters. Yeah, wow. These old bottles that he knew exactly like what labels to put on and, and how much... Because what uh, they found at his house was that he was mixing different wines together <laughs> to approximate the taste. To try and make, but he, he does have a great palate. He has a great palate. So he's actually it's actually quite a skilled fraud. Yeah, he's really he's trying to. Because people would taste it and they'd be like, oh, yeah. He he had he always has a joke every time he opens a bottle of wine. He's like, taste it, and he's like, ah, oh, it's corked. And then everyone go, <gasps> and then he says. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every time. Every yeah. time. Every time. Even in their four-day sessions, they're on bottle that. 98. He's like, uh. oh, no, it's corked. But he forgets because he falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ponzo doesn't believe that he's acting alone because they have found thousands of these bottles. There's a, they believe that there might even still be 10,000 of these bottles in circulation. Wow. Uh, oh, they're just out there. Because some, so <laughs> some people had bought shitloads of Rudy Kernian sellers and then probably were embarrassed to have spent yeah. that much money or they don't want to believe that it's fraud and so they want to believe that they actually bought the right wines. Mm. So there's heaps of these still in circulation and then they, they might plan to sell it on to mm-hmm. unsuspecting people in Asia or something. But um, Ponzo believes that he must have been advised by someone with a very deep knowledge from Burgundy. <gasps> and then Ponzo says, I know who it is, but due to the investigation, I must keep this information secret. Is he referring to the FBI <laughs> football investigation? <laughs> yeah. My investigation. Yes. It is my jurisdiction. Which is still <laughs> continuing to this day. Rudy has just come out of jail uh, in a couple of years ago. Do you reckon oh. he was making any wine in prison? <laughs> Toilet wine. <laughs> just selling it for millions. <laughs> this is I the good so. stuff. I swear I got this from France. I swear. Millions of cigarettes. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh this is a Pentridge vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Pentridge 2012. Um so Rudy uh he gets he was deported though straight after he got out of prison. So he served his sentence in the US and then uh they sent him back to Indonesia. Indonesia. Wow. And they still they reckon there's still at least 10,000 of these bottles. Wow. That's Super amazing. Great. And I love that um that our our mate Laurent is like I know who it is. <laughs> It's not working alone, and I know who it is, but I won't say. 
It's like, no, you should probably tell the cops. <laughs> yeah. You should tell I thought someone. you meant to be frank. Yeah, be frank about it. Yeah. <laughs> and the only people that were swindled were billionaires. I love a victimless crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's an amazing story. So uh, they reckon about 80% of wine at auctions now that are from that pre-1980s Burgundies would be fake. Whoa. Wow. So if you are ever... You know, look, and you got a spare twelve k up your sleeve. Just go after nineteen eighty. So he's kind of ruined Burgundies for everybody. Yes. So Ponzo, at one point, he he said he's quite chuffed because it was his family's vintage wine that was being counterfeited. But then he realised it actually has tr- tarnished the name of Burgundy. Yeah, for sure. Like so now, he's devastated. Even him selling his top stuff. People would say, it's probably fake. Yeah. Wow. This guy isn't even really the head of the French Bureau of the French Bureau of Investigation. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> this guy is a liar and a fraud. <laughs> he sounds like a real character. <laughs> yeah, so Rudy Kenny one sent back to Indonesia. No one knows still where the money came from as well. Yeah, right. There were a lot of when they went through his finances in the FBI investigation, they found that there were a lot of holes in his accounting. And he was like getting these loans based on this impressionist art that he had that he was just duplicating in the figures. Wow. So he did so he, was so faking, he might, he faking might have that been faking well. the money as well. Faking the money, faking art. His only real skill was tasting. I've Googled Rudy. Oh yeah. Ah, Nudy like. Rudy. Nudy Rudy. He's, yeah, he, so he just, but the, the, the palate was genuine. He genuinely did have a bit of a gift for tasting wine. I think, yeah, that seems genuine. But then it's also sketchy because the, the people that were like, he could taste better than anyone mm. were people like Hollywood Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do we trust Hollywood no. Jeff? <laughs> Hollywood Jeff. I trust Hollywood Jeff with my life. Yeah, me too, actually. If Jeff says it, it's real. Kearney won it. He did plead not guilty. Um, but he, yeah, he was sentenced to ten years in prison, which is the he was the the longest sentence for um, wine fraud. That's wow. a record in the yeah. Wow, amazing! There you have it. That is so cool. What a great story! Great story. Thanks, Ren. No worries. Bloody loved it. Knew nothing about it. A great wine fraud. Didn't know anything about wine or wine fraud, but now I feel educated. Now I've heard about both wine. You say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you can only get this at auctions? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because it's so expensive, this wine. Oh. This stuff called wine. Do you have any... If you were to commit fraud, where, what? I'm not going to say it while we're recording, am yeah. I? Ask yeah. me off pod. You I'd probably... Because uh, I've got thoughts and uh, plans. Because uh, I'm actually a member of the Frankston Bureau. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd probably duplicate, you know, how like uh, old people collect spoons? Yes. Some of those. What do you reckon? Like, it says Buckingham Palace on it. Yeah. I've Ooh. heard that 80% of the antiques <laughs> at Antiques Roadshow <laughs> were actually supplied by Rudy Kearney. <laughs> it is a great day when you watch an Antiques Roadshow episode and they're like, oh, yes, it's been passed down to me for, you know, by my great-grandmother's great-grandmother's great-grandmother. Been in the family for generations. They look at it and go, yeah, no, that's fake. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, – that, that. Was that's only about ten years old? <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> and it's uh, worth about four dollars. So there's a price tag on it. Have you looked at this before, <laughs> man? This is a Mars bar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's been passed down for generations. generations. No, nah. I, I also love the opposite of that, which is where they don't know anything about it, and then the person says, "Oh, my goodness! Well, I, I'm not loath to tell you that this is worth in the vicinity of six hundred to seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And they've always like found it at a garage yeah, sale. Yeah, and then or- they go, "Oh no, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to keep it for my family." Bullshit. Uh-huh. Sell yeah. that. You are yeah. selling that yeah. tomorrow. Sell it. Why would you keep it for your family? <laughs> Fuck your family. Love that. I guess that shows what my loyalty is. <laughs> Get some deeper, deeper pockets. What are you yeah. doing? Oh, no. Well, Sren, thank you so much for joining us. That was a, a great tale, well told. And uh, if we want to hear more tales about food specifically, we can tune to Good Tucker on SBS Food. Do you do any, is there any wine tasted at all on any of your episodes? Uh, do you pair anything with a wine? We have a little bit of wine at the the, the episode I mentioned in Dalesford because mm-hmm. it, it was, you know, a, a fancy like degustation kind of thing. Oh, Most of the places we went to were more, um, you know, the kinds of places you would go to. Yes. And me as well, actually. Service station. But, yeah. Yes. 
the, the Dalesford was quite. It was a fancy Pie dinner, face. and we, so we had a bit of sake, matching sake. Oh, and lovely! Wine. It was a fun night. Gorgeous. So if you can check that out on SBS Food, and if we're in Melbourne and want to see you in the flesh, Comedy Republic. One more time, what was the date for that show? Please come along. Twenty second of July. It's at Comedy Republic at six thirty. It's a fun show. Fantastic. And there's so many great shows being done at the mm. Replay Festival at Comedy Republic. Plenty of people that have been on our podcast before and many of our mates from the Melbourne comedy scene and beyond. So check that out at the Comedy Republic website. And Seren, thank you so much for joining us. Any final words for the good people at home? Uh, yeah. Please forever have deep pockets. <laughs> Well said. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, at first, when you said any final words, I was like, is this it? I've yeah. got a show to do on the 22nd. <laughs> I can't wrap it up. Yeah, yet. This is it, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid your life is over. <laughs> but then I said, yeah, I've already. <laughs> I should wrap. These, these are my final words. <laughs> it all counts. Okay, that's Great. it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Well, now it's time for everybody's favourite section of the podcast, which is, of course, our fact, quote, or question section, which I believe, Jess, has a little jingle. Fact, quote, or question. Ding. Well, you always remember the sing, and somehow I always remember the ding. God, we're lost without Matt. I know. <laughs> we both of us paused there for a second. Particularly in this part of the show. This is really his domain. But we are here, and we're going to do it. We've said goodbye to Seren. We said, get, fuck off. Get out of here. How <laughs> On dare your you? bike, son. Like, he is the... Um, he's the person trying to stay in my restaurant for four days, and I'm like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. How dare you? And so we are going to do some of our favourite things to do, and that is to thank some of our Patreons. We're going to start with a fact, quote, or question. Dave, I'll read the facts, quotes, or questions. Now, for, if you've never heard this before, where have you been? Where have you been? You haven't been to patreon.com <laughs> slash on pod, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right, uh, which is where you can sign up, support the show. And um, uh, is it on the Sydney Scheinberg level for the fact, quote, or question? Yes. Yes, that's right, the deluxe package level. And uh, other levels below that, you get bonus episodes. We put out three a month. Yep. You can join our Facebook group. You hear about live shows before anyone else. You get discounts. You come into the most lovely corner of the internet, the Facebook group, and um, it's just a beautiful place to be. Exactly, it's nice. And in fact, quote a question. You get to give us a fact, a quote, a question, a brag, a recipe, uh, a um, anything. It can be absolutely anything. A compliment. Absolutely. I'd welcome that. Nobody does that, but okay. Recently, <laughs> somebody was giving us a challenge, which is fun too. Oh, yeah, throwing down the gauntlet. I love it. So, and you also get to give yourselves a title. So, the first person we'd like to read out their fact quote question is from Lucy. Lucy's given themselves the title of World's Greatest Dildo Saleswoman by Day <laughs> and Chief of Insect Public Relations by Night. <laughs> Busy. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I suppose the insects do come out at night. Uh, it's mostly, yeah, especially like mozzies and stuff. Do you um, door to door dildo sales? Greatest She's dildo in? saleswoman. I guess. Hello, would you like any of these? Opens a little box. Hello, are you lacking anything in the dildo department? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I would do it because I'm not a dildo salesman, so that's what Lucy's here for. Lucy's given us a fact. Lucy said, oh, this is a long one. Howdy, fellas. I come bearing a couple of fun facts for you all. First fact, when we were all apes covered in hair, we had one species of lice that roamed the whole body. As we evolved and lost the majority of hair on our bodies, those lice became geographically isolated on the two islands of remaining hair, our head and our pubes. Because of that isolation, they diverged and evolved into two different species, no. head lice and pubic lice, like crabs. My second fact is that butterflies and moths are attracted to some weird shit. <laughs> okay, we're just moving on from pubes. <laughs> that was a... So An crabs and head lice, like, originated in the same insect. But then they, like any sort of species that's separated, like, you know, on the Galapagos Islands, yeah. they, they develop their own sort of ecosystem and, and adapt yeah. without any outside influence. And just they like just that. did that to our pubes. <laughs> that's crazy. That's cool. awesome. Uh, my second fact is that butterflies and moths are attracted to some weird shit. They're often found flying around and eating carnivore poop, urine, rotting animal corpses, or blood. Butterflies also have smell from their pheromones and some have been described as smelling like chocolate brownie batter, fruit loops, or barbecue. Butterflies sm that smell like that. You can smell a butterfly. Wow. 
Um, Lucy's added, P.S. Love the pod so much. It's been keeping me sane during 12-hour shifts at the sex shop I work at. Turns out selling dildos and vibrators is basically just like any other retail job and can be mind-numbingly boring at times. Oh, Absolutely. Okay, it's not door-to-door, okay. <laughs> That's a good, I'm glad we established that. I started listening to two to three episodes each shift on recommendation of my mum, who, by the way, is in the Trip Ditch Club. Hi, mum. And it's made it so much more entertaining. The Keen for Peen and Lit for Clit episodes probably made me a better salesman too. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know your oh, stuff now. Happy to help. Know the market. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, and I can't speak for you, Bob, but I would- And I will I, never allow you to. What I say, in my world, I could say, they sound like fun facts to me. What do you think of those? Oh, I see. The lice and the, but- you know, butterflies smelling like Fruit Loops and yeah. lice being two different types. It's pretty I think pretty that's pretty fun. I think those are fun facts. Okay, fantastic. Can't wait to tell people at a dinner party, hey, head lice and pube lice, uh, they started the same. Huh? Crazy. Okay, next I would love to um, – our next fact question comes from Emily Austria. Incredible. Emily's given themselves a title, co-vice president of cat wrangling. <laughs> You're on your own there. <laughs> to two co-vice presidents. <laughs> it's a big division. And uh, Emily's given us a suggestion. Oh, it's another long one. Here we go. This suggestion comes from me and my partner, Mike, after we listened to the Fact Quote a Question segment of the Shags episode. Hello, Mike. We had such a strong reaction to the pizza conversation, namely how the Chicago deep dish does not look appetizing, that we upped our Patreon subscription <laughs> to leave this message. This is this is like a, oh my a God. spiteful yeah. Patreon. I love it. I'm hoping other Chicago Chicagoans help uh, back me up. But if you do a show in Chicago, fingers crossed, and damn the red tape of the American Visa Office. Yep, it's a process. Chicago is on the list, though. Find a place that will offer up single slices of deep dish to say you tried it. But do yourself a favor and order an entire tavern-style thin crust. This pizza is cut into squares, and according to a pizza history website, (laughs) wikipedia.org, the name tavern-style comes from the pizzas originally being served in taverns, often as an enticement to drink alcohol. I strongly recommend a place called The Art of Pizza, whose main location is in the Lakeview neighborhood, but they've also got a smaller place downtown. Under no circumstances go to Pizzeria Uno, Gino's East, or Giordano's as their tourist traps with awful food. Oh my god. They keep going. The best <laughs> thing about this type of pizza. This is passion. This is passion. I know. It's, this is worth upping it. Is that unlike its deep dish cousin, you may not feel horribly full after eating, say, half, maybe three fourths um, quarters. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just correcting there. Um, or even the whole fucking thing as you stuff piece after piece into your mouth as you stare into the abyss because your brain is too fried from a particularly stressful work week and eating a delicious. <laughs> disc of bread, <laughs> tomato sauce and cheese is the only coping mechanism you have left. That's oh, great. no, I think I've said too much about my own self-care. <laughs> Speaking of coping mechanisms, thank you all for the laughs and every dog shit riff you've gone on. Mike and I recently packed up our respective apartments and moved in together and you were all there with us while we wrapped up plates, threw out entire closets full of crap and unpacked box after box in our new home. We honestly will put on an episode every chance we get um, because we love you guys so much. Hope to see you in Chicago soon. That is so good. I love that. Also, nothing in there about cat wrangling, so it's just an uh, irrelevant title. Love that. Have I'm you Googled a, the tavern style This pizza? is a, like a tavern style. Oh, hell yeah. It looks really, really good. You I can essentially say. get that at crust pizza, but it's just like garlic squares. It's just garlic pizza. Well, I mean, but these, there are different, obviously, there's different toppings or whatever as well. Yeah. Right? So, it, but when if there's an option for a thin crust at a pizza place here in Australia, I love a thin. Me too. Love a thin. Love a thin. I like it when they when you have like a pita bread, like Lebanese pizza. Love yep. that kind of thing. Yep. Um, I am going to the United States of America later this month. Yes, you are. I'm going to be in New York City and New Orleans, and I'm not going to make it to Chicago, but I know there are some sort of pizza places in New York City, so if anyone's got any suggestions for- Wait, there's pizza in New York? Can you believe it? Are you sure? But is there Chicago tavern-style pizza? I'm sure you could find it somewhere. Let me know, or if there's any other uh, pizza pies, as you call it. Mm. You better believe that the pizza pie will be taking over the Dave Pistagram hashtag on Instagram. Cannot wait. So, yeah, l- l- let me know if you've got any suggestions. Thank you so much. I love people upping the pledge just so they can get in here and defend so pizza. funny. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Emily and Mike. Um, our next fact quarter question comes from Isaac. Isaac Caltenko or Caltenso. And Isaac's title is Guy Who Tells the Guy That's Saying He's Walking There That I'm Walking Here. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so let's take that out. Hey, I'm walking here. Well, I'm walking here. <laughs> That's really good. Sorry, I got... 
I blacked out there. I yeah. got really into that. Fuck yeah, I felt it. Isaac's uh, given us a brag and a question. Love it. Cheeky. We don't get enough brags though, so I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm willing to let it slide. I agree. All right, here we go. Another long one. Jesus, the essays that have been written today. I love it. <laughs> Um, But my voice does not. Hey, do go on. Long time listener, first time caller. I have a brag and a question. I started listening to your pod back in December after hearing about it from the Weekly Planet. I started from episode one because I've never liked skipping ahead and just so happened to have cleared through everything just in time for you guys to reach your 400th episode. No way. Since December. (laughs) You've been listening a lot. 400 episodes in six months or less is amazing. That's incredible. Uh, Many congrats on reaching that milestone. I've listened to the equivalent of eight years of your lives in six months. (laughs) <laughs> that's actually that's pretty amazing because we've changed a lot and we've mm-hmm. grown a lot. We were quite young when we started this. Yeah. Not like, wow, so young. Just like young. Yeah, you know? in comparison, yeah. I listen back and my voice sounds different. Yeah, this is a quarter of our lives at this point. Fuck. Can you believe that? That's including like childhood. That's crazy. It's more than half our adult lives since turning 18. What? <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> I hate that. I don't hate it, but it's scary. It's just scary just because time just starts accelerating the older you get. Yeah, which sucks. Anyway. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but you go, oh, my goodness, it's been eight years. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. For, I mean, both of our relationships are younger than our podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> and will for, they forever will be because they'll be ending soon. The podcast will continue because the podcast is more important than our personal lives. A hundred percent. I've always said that. <laughs> yeah. I said that in my wedding vows. <laughs> Dave, at your wedding, um, where they said, Dave, do you take this woman to be your wife? You looked out at Matt and I, and we went, yeah, all right, go on. <laughs> you gave me the <laughs> nod. Said, oh, thank God, yes. Oh, thank goodness. I do. <laughs> that would have been really awkward, but we would have backed you in that brawl. Um, thanks for stuffing my brain with many cool stories, bits of trivia, and lots of laughs. Now I've got to go through the Patreon back catalogue. I don't know what to do with my life after that. I'd slow down a little. That's right. I mean, there's, there's, Isaac, wow. there's 180 bonus episodes in the Patreon catalogue at time of recording, but still, the rate you're going through, that's only a couple of months. Yeah, you'll smash through that. I would slow down because it's sort of like when you binge a TV series and then you have to wait week to week and it's, <sighs> it's hard. My question is, how often do you guys find yourselves using Google search in a day? I found that I end up having about 40 to 70 different searches a day comprising of famous people's names, movies, questions, historical events, and so on. I didn't realize how much I rely on it until I've asked family and friends only to find out they barely use search engines. Oh, what do they do? Uh, here's the thing. Sometimes um, like we'll have a conversation with my parents and they'll sort of, they'll wonder something. You know, they'll kind of go, oh, I wonder what that is. And I'll get my phone out. Oh, right. But they, and they don't think to do that. But if you hadn't been there, they would just wonder and then forget about yeah, it. Yeah, and that annoys the shit out of me. Oh, it's like, yeah, we can know that now. We can find out how tall Ryan Gosling is. Mm. It's fine, you know? Mm, but I have dumb shit like that into my mind all the time. I'm yep. constantly Googling. My my number one most used app, which I've had for about 15 years on here, there's probably better versions, but uh, Wikipanion, which is just a Wikipedia search. Oh, that's great. And I just, I'm constantly looking up celebrities. Everything. Yeah. And, yeah. I go, what was that movie again? What year did that come out? Yeah. Constantly looking up dumb stuff like that. So I, I can't reckon, watch I'm a like- movie without looking it up on IMDb and reading all the trivia and seeing, I, I recognize that actor. Where do I know him from? Yeah, oh, yeah. I watched from? that uh, series mm-hmm. and then, uh huh. Oh, that's interesting. He's married to this person. I didn't know that. Yeah. So do that a bit. It would vary day to day for sure. But how but many? Forty do, to seventy is 40 a to lot. 70. I reckon I'd probably go a couple of dozen times a day. I, let's just out of interest. I'm going to forget, but I was, it would be interesting to like keep track of it. But yeah. sometimes you do it without even really thinking about it. You know, it just happens. Um, yeah, absolutely. A fantastic brag and question, Isaac. Thank you so much. I'm doing most of it on my phone. So, for example, if I went yesterday, yesterday it said I was on my phone for four hours, which is way too long. Mm-hmm. A bunch of that is uh, I watched a movie on Disney Plus. So hopefully that's that's on not your pl- phone. On my phone, yeah. Why? Um, it was just easy whilst I was eating. I was making dinner, then eating dinner. You know what I mean? It's oh, just yeah, right okay, there. Yeah. So and it was in in sections. Um, but yesterday it said I picked up my phone 94 times. Which Fuck. Is so many. That's a lot. I have set a bit of a timer, like a time limit on um, Instagram and TikTok on my phone. Yes, I have too. And I hit that limit before midday yesterday. And that yesterday was when I was mostly writing a report. Oh, wow. I've done I've, – so it's a 30-minute limit I've got for Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. 30 minutes? 30 minutes. I I do the thing saying ignore for 15 minutes you know, all the time. <laughs> but there was a day last week where I – it came up before I'd even left bed and I went, oh, I've got the rest of the day and I'm locked I've out. I've locked out. I I'm know. Locked, yeah. And I'd just gotten a message on Instagram from our friend Beck Petratus and then I was locked out. I was like, fuck, well, now I have to skip I have, for 15 I have minutes. To, I have to skip. Um, okay. 
<clears throat> Finally, last factual question for this week comes from Matthew Dennis, and uh, Matthew's title is Official Mailman of the Pod, which we love. Love it. Keep delivering the good news. And Matthew has given us a question. Hey, gang. Such a huge fan of the pod. I've been a listener since 2016 and I can't believe it's taken me this long to write in. This past year I started a new career as a mailman and have gone through the entire back catalogue while walking around town. Dave, get off your phone, stop Googling things. <laughs> I'm looking up how much I use the thing there. But I'm listening to <laughs> I'm listening. No, you're not. Around town. <laughs> Throughout all the ups and downs of the last seven years, your reports never fail to make me laugh and keep my head up. That's very, so very nice, nice to you, Matthew. Thank you. For my question, I have a kiss... A kiss one, marry one, kill one scenario tailored to each of you. Okay. So, Dave, this is yours. Kiss, marry, kill, which is the, it's a nice version. Kiss, marry, kill. Yeah, it feels less gross. Beans, pies, creamies. <laughs> you got to kiss one, you got to kill one, you got to marry one. Okay. I'd, I'd marry a pie. Okay. It's, they're always there for me. Uh, but now I'm visualising like the scene in American Pie, and I'm like, gross, Dave. <laughs> that's, gross. Why we, that's why we've changed one to ma- to kiss. You don't want to fuck fu- some beans. I'm, I'm not fucking the pie. So it's- you're marrying you're marrying the pie. Yep. I've got to kill one. Kill beans or creamies. And I've got to kiss one. Yep. Oh, I think that I'd probably kiss the bean. And- <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear yourself? <laughs> yeah. I know what I'm doing, and I would probably I'd kill the creamy. I'm so tempted by creamy, but yeah. I've gotten this far without ever tasting one because I've never been yeah. to the, the beautiful place called Vermont. I've never had a creamy dessert, <laughs> so I think I could go the rest of my life without having one. Yeah, Even though yeah. I'm so tempted by one, if I had to kill one, I'd kill the creamy. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Well done. Okay, I've got one as well, and then we'll do mats together. <laughs> okay. Um, so for me, it's submarines, Bindi Irwin, or accountants. Oh, my God, that's tricky for you. Um, You're going to kill one of them. You're have to marry one. Oh, okay. So I would kill <laughs> I would kill <laughs> accountants. Okay, even though that is way more brutal than the others because oh, that's yeah. b- b- millions of people. Okay, I will kill submarines. <laughs> okay. I would kiss Accountants, mm-hmm. and I would marry Bindi Irwin. Okay, marry Bindi. Yeah, back into the Irwin family. Yes, you don't want to be married to an accountant. No offence. Uh, we've we've no. had Seren on this week, who of course is- And he, look, he seems nice. He's a, and he's a recovered accountant. <laughs> he's a full-time comedian now. He's let that go. That let, He's let come that, from the dark side. That dirty, dirty yes, past. Exactly. Um, okay, Matt's is the Saints primates tism. Okay. He's got to kill one. Let's start with that. Oh, my God. He's got to kill all primates. <laughs> Or is it his podcast? Do you think? Do you think that he would kill Tism because they? I feel like there's kind of like a, a, a almost a joke there that they they'd say, "Yeah, kill us." You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's kill Tism. Yeah, I think they'd kind of laugh about it as they died. And then kiss primates. Primates, I reckon. Marry the marry, saints. Marry the saints because, like yep. Pius, for me, they've been there for him his whole life. That's right. Well, that's lovely. And there's ups and downs, just like any good marriage. But <laughs> every now and then. Every hundred years or so, they win a premiership. <laughs> um, Matthew says, all answers are final, so choose carefully. And also says- <laughs> Whoa, 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 we didn't know this before. No, no, no. I've just killed a creamy. <laughs> P.S. If the US tour dates are still up in the air, please consider visiting the Pacific Northwest um, during the month of Rukunama. It truly is the best season to experience the Seattle and Portland areas. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So thank you to Matthew, Isaac, Emily, and Lucy. Now, the next thing we now need to do, Dave, is- Oh, my God. It feels like it takes so long, um, is uh, thank a few of our wonderful Patreons who support us on the shout-out level or above. Yes. We, you, well, you usually come up with a game yeah. for or something that relates to the episode as we shout these people out. Can you think of anything? Yeah, what kind of product they're frauding. Oh, good so one. So it was a wine fraud. Like what, what kind of fraud are they doing? Okay, yep. Um, do you want to – we can split this in half maybe? Do okay, half great. Each? You want me to read out some names here? Yeah, go on. You've been reading for a little bit there. I know. I'm tired. I would like to thank, first of all, from Acacia Ridge mm. in Queensland here in Australia. It is Graham McKenzie. Graham McKenzie. Queensland makes me think of – I was going to say pineapples, but that's – Counterfeit pineapples is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> like you cut into it. It's but like also, a- I'm thinking of Coffs Harbour, which is in New South Wales. <laughs> but I, th- I think of – Queensland pineapples? pineapples? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. Pineapples it is. But a fake pineapple is it like you cut into it and it's like cake or something. Like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Is it cake? Is it cake? It's, uh, it is. I just wanted some slot. I just wanted an actual pineapple. I want a pineapple. This pizza's going to be terrible now. <laughs> it's got cake on it. 
ham and cake. Ham and cake tavern style. And then it turns out that's an amazing combo <laughs> and those people end up being rich. Yeah, that's right. Good on you, Graham. You've done it. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. I would like to say next up from Las Vegas, Nevada, Benjamin Cream. <laughs> what a great – I've never met anyone with Las Vegas Cream. Counterfeit Benjamin- creamies. It's got to be counterfeit. Fake creamies. It's the creamy fraud. Benjamin Cream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's only funny because we just talked about creamies. Just about creamies. Otherwise, it's not a funny name. <laughs> From the, the, the cream empire. <laughs> but taking it too far, Benjamin, with your fake counterfeit creamies. Come on. Let people enjoy their legitimate creamies. I love it so much. <laughs> I would like to thank from... Shoham, oh my goodness, I, should, I, I don't know how to say your city name, but it's from Israel. Thank you to, so much to Omer Sharon or Omer Sharon. I'm assuming Omer Sharon. Mm, it's the... <laughs> I keep starting a sentence hoping that it'll finish itself. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. The... Fake. Fake. Applesauce. Oh my God. What? What is it instead? Um... Off yogurt. Oh, no. Sorry. That's very different. But you have it in a jar so you don't know until you open it and take it home. Oh, and like- it's, very, it's very expensive stuff too, like this wine. Like you might put it on the shelf for years and just say, look, I've got the really good, this is the most expensive Alba sauce in the world. It's from Israel. Wow. It's very old. And you open it and it turns out. It's just yogurt. <laughs> and it'd be really bad by then. It'd be rancid. Oh, oh mom. What have you done to the world, oh, Omar? Mom. <laughs> Love it. Thanks so much for uh, listening from Israel. Shoham is the central district, a town in the central district of Israel. Hmm. Population 21,000. Amazing. Great to have you on board. Love it. Next up, I would like to thank from Perth in Western Australia, it's Dan. Dan, Dan, the fake piano man. <laughs> okay, well, it's just a fake piano. It's a guitar. <laughs> okay. He's saying it's a piano. Okay. Yeah, it's not. Great. So he's just strumming, saying, I, I'm, I love the piano. I'm a pianist. <laughs> That's what he said. Damn. And people believe him. Damn, that's he's dirty. charming as hell. <laughs> yeah. um, may I thank some people Please. as well? I would love to thank from Ooh Shit. <laughs> <laughs> from where? Ooh Shit. Ooh Shit. How would you say that? Ooh Shot. Ooh Shot. Ooh Shot. In Great Britain, I would love to thank John Cranstone. John Cranstone. Okay. John Cranstone is peddling fake Zebras. Whoa, they're horses. They're just horses. Painted? Painted. That's awful. Yeah. You shouldn't paint animals, John. No, you shouldn't. Come on, John. He considered tattooing, but it took forever. Yeah. So you can- <laughs> Very tedious. <laughs> John. Fake He's zebras. like, yeah, I've got these, um, this field in Ooshot mm-hmm. <laughs> full of zebras in, in the middle of Great Britain. Yeah. Thank you, John, you criminal. Uh, and I would also love to thank from Lebanon, Ohio, Abigail Swinehart. Abigail Swinehart. What are they peddling? Fake. Fake dogs. Fake Okay, fake dogs. Mm-hmm. They're not dogs at all. No. Nah. What are they? Small children. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got face paint on them. <laughs> And make it. They she she told the kids they're playing dogs, so they 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 they're going they're on the all fours going ruff ruff ruff, <laughs> and people are taking them. People are like, great. I'll have people that People are one. kidnapping those. Oh, children. I'll take the big one. <laughs> How much bigger will that one get? <laughs> Quite a lot bigger, actually. <laughs> this is the weirdest looking chihuahua I've ever seen. <laughs> ruff ruff ruff. <laughs> but it's okay. No children were harmed, and I would also love to thank from Dublin in Ireland, Eleanor Saker. Eleanor Saker, counterfeit. Givenchy's. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but there are Givenchy bandanas. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Everyone's like, do they even make those? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Obviously. Look. Have a look. Look at it. So it's Givenchy, so shut up and pay $1,000 for up. it. Do you want this bandana or not? Yeah. Are you a loser? Yeah. Do you want to look cool like me? And Alan's wearing like 50, 50 pants. And it's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finally, I would love to thank from Hove in Brighton, uh, Lena. Lena. Lena is making and selling fake gumboots. <laughs> oh, fake gumboots. Okay. What are, are they like? Or as they call them, wellies. Wellies. And they are cake. <laughs> <laughs> they're made of cake. <laughs> yeah. No, they're made of styrofoam. Oh, no. So as soon as they get wet. Oh, that's bad. They are just falling So people apart. have been hanging out at Glastonbury recently and they're yeah. fake. <laughs> Absolutely ruined. <laughs> they are barefoot in the mud. <laughs> Good on you, Lena. I hope you made a pretty penny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Lena, Eleanor, Abigail, John, Dan, Omar, Benjamin, and Graham. 
Now, Dave, there's one more thing we have to do. That's right. We induct people into the Triptych Club, which is our Hall of Fame Theatre of the Mind, mm. where we induct every week people that have been on the shout-out level or above for three consecutive years. We've already given them a shout-out a couple of years back, but to enshrine them forever, to put them in the Hall of Fame, we read out their name and welcome them into a club where you can never leave. But why the heck would you want to? <laughs> it sounds very defensive. Yeah. And it is. It is. Why? Tell me why. Tell why me, would you want to leave? Why. Go on. I know. I'm, I'm. I'm listening. I'm open to it. Yeah, we're absolutely listening. But just like, just give me a good answer because yeah, I, I can't think of a possible reason why you want to leave. And so far, no one has come up with a good answer. <laughs> so you're all stuck inside there. And basically, it's a club. Mm-hmm. It's a hangout zone. It's uh, anything you want it to be, and everything it should be. That's right. We've got live music every week. Jess is behind the bar. She's in the kitchen, mm-hmm. whipping up a storm, adding a new item of food and drink to the menu. What yeah. are we? What are we drinking? You wouldn't believe it. What? But I have just come across a case of a delightful burgundy. Oh, my God. That I would simply love to share with my friends. Um, but I will be keeping the bottles. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, of course you will. <laughs> uh, and, Dave, you also you book a band. I book a band every week, mm-hmm. and you are never going to believe what it. What have you done? I, so I book these bands, obviously, a long time mm. in advance. Mm-hmm. And we talked a lot about France this week, a little bit of Burgundy. And I have booked the legendary 70s and 80s French rock band Telephone. Get out. Telephone. I hear. No, really? One of the greatest French rock bands of all time selling over 10 million albums to date. I have always wanted to see Telephone. Before. Well, now you can. Telephone oh my God. are live. And let me read out some of their song titles. This is Telephone on Spotify. Fantastic. <laughs> New York avec toi. Uh huh. Cendrillon. Yep. Un autre monde. Mm hmm. Ça. Mm hmm. And again, another version of New York avec toi. Wow. And we get to see that live. See, so Abs- why would you want to leave the Triptych Club? Why would you want to leave? They've had 1.2 million monthly listeners. They're still a big deal, these these French rockers, and they are rocking the club tonight. Thank you, Telephone. Take it away. Now, normally Matt is uh, lifting the velvet rope. I'm going to do it this time. Dave, there's only one person we're inducting into. <laughs> that, that's great. It's a long run up for one person. It is a lot. Um, but, yeah, Dave hypes them up. I hype Dave up. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, then we go from there. Everybody goes goes about their, their partying. Exactly. Telephone hit the stage and they don't stop rocking. That's right. Are you ready to, to welcome in our latest triptych entry? Absolutely. Well, from location unknown, so we can only assume deep within the fortress of the moles, please welcome in Benji Pierce. Benji? Ben, no, Ben out of Benji. And then I hold up a sign that says 10 on it. Oh, like that's Like 10 good. out of 10. Yeah. Ten out of Benji. Ten out of Ben. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ben out of Benji. Woo! Woo! Yeah, you've pierced my heart. There we go. In a good way. In a very good way. You've in saved a, my life. Exactly. I needed I needed that. <laughs> I needed air in my heart and you put a hole in it. You, some would say you stabbed me, but I would say you saved me. Benji Pierce, thank you so much for your support. Go on in and enjoy some delicious wine, but we cannot stress this enough. We need those bottles back. Please. Do not take the bottles. Do not throw them out. Well, that about brings us uh, to the end of today's episode. Um, if you would like to suggest a topic, you can absolutely do so. There's a link in the show notes and also at dogoonpod.com, which is our website where you can find information about all the other podcasts we do and uh, live shows, all that sort of fun stuff. You can find us at Do Go On Pod across all socials as well. Can I just say, well said. Thank you. I say it every week. I love it. I live for that bit. It's my favourite part of the whole show. Thank so you. Thank you so much for it. Dave, thank you. For us once again. Hey, we'll be back next week with another fantastic episode. But until then, I'll say thank you so much for listening and goodbye. Laters. Bye. Bye.